Galaxy Electricity League First Division. It's myself, Kieran Burke, and once again delighted to be joined on commentary by Tony G, who has the team news for us. Tony. Thanks, Kieran. A, a crunch game for both sides tonight. Longford Town, if they have any ambitions of winning the league title, really need to win their last four games, including tonight. Go away with their tough running and the last three games at Drogheda Brain UCD. Probably need to get something tonight as well if they are to retain any hopes of making the playoffs. The team news, Longford Town of Aaron McCabe in as Dean Byrne is on the bench. So Longford Town lining out 3-4-2-1. Lee Stacey in goals. Then the back three, Mick McDonald, Joe Manley and Dylan Hand. And then the midfield four, you're Shane L. Worthy on the right, Adam Evans on the left, Dean Zambo and Aid Durbin in the centre. Up front on his own is Rob Manley and behind the striker, Aaron McCabe and Sam Verdon. Galway United have a lot of injuries and they have uh, uh, Place, Mickey Place is out suspended, so he's a big loss on them to Pacey striker. They're going to line out, looks like a 4 2 1 3. Michael Slingerman in goals because Kevin Hogan, their usual goalkeeper, is injured. You have a back four, Jack Lynch, right back. Killian Brood and, and Morris Nugent, five and six in the centre defence. Mark Ludden, left back at number three. And then you'll have two in front of them. Shane Duggan, the captain, and Sam Ward, eight and 27. Connor Barry, the attacking midfielder, is behind the, uh, three, the strike force trio of Stephen Christopher on the right. Wilson, where were you? Uh, in the centre and probably Shane Doherty will move out to the left of that front three there. Yeah, I suppose Tony, the big uh, team news uh, from a Longford point of view, Dean Byrne um, moved to the substitutes bench but I think personally that's probably good management from Daradoy. He hasn't played football for six months, he's trying to find his feet again. You don't want to get an, in an injury now at this stage of the season without wanting to count our chickens yet. Longford look like at this moment in time they're going to be at least in the playoffs so it it's sensible management from, from Daradoy. I think so because he was out injured for a long, long time. Of course there's going to be a minute silence for Michael Hayes, the competition secretary of the FAI, who sadly passed away during the week. Uh, Michael Hayes, long time involved in the FAI in the League of Ireland and passing away after short illness. Big loss to the League, a lovely, unassuming gentleman and a big, big loss to League of Ireland and the FAI. I'd just like to also mention a uh, long time Longford Town fan and, uh, and, and, and uh, Bernie Murray, who passed away during the week as well, Kieran. Yeah, and uh, Paddy Donnelly actually uh, wrote a, a lovely little piece in, in the match programme, the e-match programme, which you'll all have if you've signed up for the uh, stream tonight um, about the, the, the sad passing of, of Michael Hayes. So uh, do, do give that little passage a, a read. But um, it's back to business here tonight at Bishopsgate. Huge game for, for Longford Town and Galway United in the promotion stakes. As we were just saying there a couple of moments ago, Dean Byrne, he's on the bench tonight, but Aaron McCabe gets a big opportunity to, to start for Longford He tonight. does, and of course he got the late, late winner against Galway United in Eamon DC Park when the sides met earlier on the season. A game that Longford Town probably didn't deserve to win, Kieran, if the truth be told on the no, night. No, it was a mistake from their goalkeeper, uh, Horgan, on the night. Obviously, it's Schlingerman in goals tonight. We, we know Schlingerman quite well. He's, he's been around the league with the likes of Sligo Rovers. I actually remember him making a mistake here many moons ago when he was in goals for Atlone and uh, Victor and Canem popped up for, for a late winner for Longford in the El Clasico derby. So, um, don't want to upset the Galway fans tuning in tonight, but uh, hopefully more of the same from him tonight as Longford with the first attack of the game. Adam Evans, who uh, went off injured, of course, in that loan. So great to see him back. He's won an early corner for Longford, Tony. As Dara said after the match, it was just a precaution just to make sure no... no, no point yeah. exacerbating that yeah, so with it's actually a, a goal kick I thought uh, he had won the corner obviously, I thought it was a corner obviously too. bounced back off Evans so uh, good good early start there from Longford but unfortunately it doesn't yield a, a set piece for them Slingerman with the goal kick now and uh, the ball just on the six yard box and he hits it down centre towards Waweu and uh, Dylan Hand wins the header goes back with Shane now where if he loses that to Shane Duggan and Shane Duggan the skipper for Goey turns back and, and plays it to Mark Ludden the left back a long time stalwart of Goey it uh, flicks off is, is that a Durvin's boot and it's in the box but it's cleared by Hand and it comes out to Rob Manley and Rob Manley is pushed in the back there by K 
Killian Broder and that would be a free kick too long for town just two or three yards inside their own half Kieran yeah, and look, we see that so much from Rob Manley winning free kicks in those in, in those positions. He's, he's a really good hold-up striker, and he's, he's laid down an early marker there by winning that free kick. And Zamba whips in that three kick towards Manley, but it's cleared out to Mark Ludden here, the left back. And it was Nugent who can play midfield, but he's back in the centre back row, and he played out to Mark Ludden. Now Wawewo has it for uh, Galway United. He holds the ball on, well holds off. Dylan Hand plays to Duggan, and Duggan is playing that into the number 10 Conor Barry the attacking midfielder in the orange boots there for Galway and he's a big plus he was missing for the game against Longford in Eamon DC Park quality mm. attacking midfielder so that's a great boost for Galway to have him back here uh, yeah they've got some nice players in this team Tony uh, Shane Duggan obviously is the, is the standout player but that was a poor pass from him he had a lot of space there uh, Conor Barry is a very very talented young player as is Shane Doherty who's only returned recently from the States he was uh, in a good scoring streak before he, before he left Galway so a great boost for them to, to have him back and Stephen Christopher is a player who's who's uh, impressed me in, in recent times in the first division as well so some some very talented players out there for Galway Longford won't want to, to give them too much space to operate Evans in possession now for Longford he's hounded by a couple of Galway players he finds the captain Dean Zambra he's got options in front of him he finds Sam Verdon who plays at four towards Rob Manley but the Galway defence just nip in there and get rid of it and uh, it looks like Sam Verdon may have taken a late knock is the referee going to give a free kick here or is he just stop and play for treatment we'll find out in a moment Tony we, we certainly will and you always get a bit worried when Sam goes down because uh, he's had a, a couple of injury concerns over the last couple of years and uh, you need a fit Sam Verdon for the, the run in and with the fixtures that all the teams are playing Kieran I am convinced that three more points from the remaining four games of Longford Town will put them into the playoffs because all the teams around us, Cabinteda, UCD, Galway, uh, they all have to play each other as well as playing the likes of Drogheda yeah. and, and Bray. Uh, well, look, we've seen the result last night, Drogheda yeah. losing to Atlow. Nobody's seen that coming. Teams are going to take points off each other in this division. So uh, if Longford want to win the league, I think I, I agree what you said earlier on in commentary. Longford have to win every game. Um, but there's, there's still a lot to play for. But unfortunately, no free kick there for Longford referee. Restart and play with a drop ball. Shane Elworthy heads that clear, but it, uh, it hits off the boot of Sam Wall. But Longford Town get a free kick just inside the Galway half, inside the centre circle. So Dean Zamber will uh, launch this one forward. Very stop start so far, yeah. Tony. A lot of little niggly fouls out there at the moment. Hopefully the game will start to breathe now in the next few moments. And isn't it great to see the biggest crowd of the season since COVID? Resurgence? Yeah, and it was, it was great to hear a bit of a chant there when the players came out of the tunnel as well um, it's great and credit to the club they've done amazing work to get the capacity up to 200 tonight um, with those regulations they obviously have to, to balance against uh, so well done to everyone involved in that and the uh, general tickets that went on sale were sold out very promptly as uh, Durvin hits that ball forwards but it's uh, cleared by the goal defence and hand with the header there and it hits off Broder the centre half's head and goes out for a corner good play by Longford Town that's a really good effort from Dylan Hand he's quite a bit I know he's just inside the area but he's still probably 12-13 uh, yards out there and he's got good power in the header now look it was straight down the middle I would have expected Schlingerman to save that one but it takes a deflection on the way through and Longford do now get that first corner of the game which will be taken by the captain Dean Zambra it certainly will and the corner coming in from the left and uh, all but uh, two, three Longford players in the box as Sam Verdon runs into the box now comes towards hand it's missed and it's cleared by I think that's uh, Bruder again and it comes out to Manley and uh, Joe Manley so it was actually Jack Lynch that cleared the danger for Galway as it's whipped in by Manley but it comes out to Adam Evans on the edge of the box he takes two or three touches he plays it all oh, towards McCabe and, and it's going to Rob Manley oh, what a brilliant bit of skill from McCabe a half volley from him he forces the save from Schlingerman and there is that man again Rob Manley he lives off moments seven, like that seven goal of the season great play by Adam Evans he got the ball in the edge of the 18 yard box he feigned as if he was going to play it in then he took two or three touches Play, cut back inside his marker, create the space, played it into McCabe. McCabe, as you say, with this uh, sort of a volley, and Rob Manley just turns it in. Yeah, Seventh goal of the season. We, we spoke about uh, McCabe and the opportunity he has tonight with his first start for the town, and what a sublime bit of skill. He flicks the ball up to himself, takes it on the half volley, forces a really good save from Schlingerman. Don't take the save away from him, but unfortunately for the Galway United goalkeeper, there was Rob Manley. As I said, he lives for moments like that. He's a real goal poacher, and it's his seventh a goal of the season. 1-0 to Longford Town early on here at Bishopsgate. Just the five and a half minutes played. So a great start for Longford Town as Mark Ludden hits that down to Awero 
But uh, Hand will get there, will he? Yeah, he does indeed. But he loses out to Stephen Christopher. Has it for Galway. Aaron McCabe dispossesses him. And now A. Durvin has it. Plays it to Dean Zamber. Dean Zamber will play that back to Mick McDonald. Mick McDonald takes a touch and launches that forward. And uh, pushing the back by Manley. No. Referee says player. And it's Shane Elworthy. Great hold up play again from Manley. Yeah, there, it was superb. Shane Elworthy knocks it back to Mick McDonald. Mick McDonald takes a touch. He's looking for options. He'll play that long as he's fouled by Wawaya. Definitely Wawaya. a late hit there. Yeah. On, uh, yeah, well done to the referee. I thought he might have just turned away at the wrong time, but he caught it in the corner of his eye and Elworthy wins a free kick deep inside Longford territory. Quickly taken by Mick McDonnell. He finds Dylan Hand. And Dylan Hand it just opens his body and he takes a touch and he plays it across there to uh, back to the keeper, Lee Stacey now. And Lee Stacey will launch this forward. And Brilliant it's to Shane ball. Elworthy. Great ball. Great touch to Sam Verdon. Back to Shane Elworthy. He had to check himself inside to Zamber. Zamber plays across to Durvin. Durvin across to Joe Manley. Joe Manley taking a touch just inside his own half. Back to A. Durvin. A. Durvin advancing forward now and back heels it and has to play it back to Manley. And that's Manley Joe, of course, the defensive Manley. And he plays now to Adam Evans. Adam Evans back to Manley. So keep ball here from Longford Town as Joe Manley launches that ball forward. And it's trying to find his brother Rob Manley, but it's cleared by Killian Bruder, the centre half of Galway. Now Stephen Christopher has it just inside the half there. He's trying to find where Wewo, but uh, intercepted and Longford Town come away with it. It's now Durvin to Mick McDonald. Mick McDonald, great ball, tried to pie two Galway players to Sam Verdon. Out to Shane Elworthy on the right, back to Sam Verdon. Sam Verdon looking for options, plays it back to Mick McDonald. So Longford playing patient football just taking the time building up trying to wait for the options before launching the ball forward by hand poor ball and it's intercepted there by Sam Ward and now it comes to Shane Duggan Shane Duggan back to Killian Broder Broder plays it across to uh, Morris Nugent and Morris Nugent can play midfield but he's in the, the back line of centre back tonight as Jack Lynch launches that forward towards Wawewu but uh, Lee Stacey comes out and scissors kicks that out for a throw into go. A great start for Longford Town, Kerry. Yeah, there's a real pep in their step at the moment, Tony. I know you said they're, they're playing keep ball there, but they're moving the ball with a real zip and a real pace and some lovely football, some lovely interlinking play there between uh, Verdon and Elworthy out down on this uh, this far side. It was a poor ball from Dylan Hand. He gave it away cheaply. Darrell Doyle won't be happy with that. Longford need to, to keep doing what they're doing early on here, moving the ball really quickly around the pitch. And Mick McDonald challenges with where he wins that header, but it uh, comes out to Christopher now. He dinks inside. He's three long players around. Plays that to Duggan. Duggan out to Mark Ludden, the left back advancing forward, tries to play it to the back post. It's too far ahead of where and the other goalie player was miles away from it. So harmlessly out for goal kick for Longford Town. Yeah, Mark Ludden's got a, a very sweet left peg on him, so he'd be disappointed with that um, that attempted cross. He's just uh, got under it a little bit too much and has gone straight out for a goal kick. But a really good start from Longford here. Uh, some good distribution from Lee Stacey in the opening few minutes as well so uh, Shane Elworthy you might just see it on the camera now I think he's just out of shot but he's glued down to this uh, touchline here he's just on the halfway line but he's chalk on his boots and he's he's given Stacey the option but Stacey goes more direct this time up towards Rob Manley but that's headed away by the Galway defence certainly is but uh, A. Durban volleys that back up in the air Sam Verdon with the header with Bruder and Bruder wins that he takes a knock but he's getting back up rather gingerly and Longford uh, win that ball with Joe Manley but it's uh, back out there to Lynch and Lynch tries to hit that ball long to a Wewu and it hits off the hand of Dylan Hand is it oh it's given a free kick to Longford Town so that's uh, be able to count it down now so good for Longford Town to just be able to count proceedings down there so free kick to Longford Town. We have played nine minutes and 48 seconds. A Longford Town lead. Uh, Adam Evans, brilliant work. Then McCabe with the shot, saved by the goalie keeper. And there was uh, the fox in the box for a seventh goal this season. Rob Manley to pounce and uh, put the ball in the back of the goal. And there, Sam Verdon goes up for that. He flicks it on. But will it go to Manley? Yes. And Manley shoots Rob Manley and hits the side net. And again, good long ball. Good flick header on by Sam Verdon. And Rob Manley runs across diagonally. Clever yeah. run, creates the space. Fortunately, the shot into the side netting. Take his goal out of the equation for a moment, Tony. Aside from that, his work off the ball has been brilliant. He's given that goal way back for really big problems at the moment. They're not able to pick him up at all. He's, he's popping up all over the place. His hold-up play has been excellent. And uh, we've seen some lovely direct play there from Longford. It just goes to show it doesn't always have to be this nice tick attack of football and uh, the pressure here is clearly shown Galway United kicking that ball straight out from the goal kick so Longford now with possession high up the field was it a foul on Manley referee says no and uh, Galway come aware of the ball now as uh, Ludden launches that forward to Awewu Donald is there 
and Wawewa wins that, plays it to Shane El uh, sorry, McDonald wins that, plays it to Shane El Wherever Shane El Wherever advances forward to Rob Manley, great, great ball. ball on the turn, pass to Sam Verdon, space, head of Lorden, but is crossed, gathered easily by Slingerman in the goals there for goal, as the tribesmen will come forward here inside their own half, Duggan plays that ball out there to the uh, striker on the left, Shane Doherty, and it's uh, back there to Stephen Christopher. Stephen Christopher will switch play across to the far side. So good switch in the play there by Galway. And uh, that's too far ahead of Conor Barry. Goes harmlessly out for throwing too long for Yeah, town. it looked like Galway might be just building a bit of momentum there. One of their better passing moves of the game, switching it from side to side, but the move broke down fairly quick, quickly. So Longford will be pleased with that. I think Galway just need to try and settle things down because Longford have built, built up a really good head of steam here early on. Uh, in saying that, though, they've just oh, given away the the possession of that. And is it a free? Oh, oh fortunately, just outside lucky. the box where we were looked like he was going to get uh, in the clear. And fortunately, outside the box. So clever foul there and Joe will get a yellow card Joe Manley for that yeah I have to say I thought that was going to be a penalty for a moment Tony but it's just outside the area Manley will pick up a yellow card and rightfully so but just goes to show how uh, easy a mistake you can make how costly it can be Longford gave away possession cheaply from that throw in Galway pounced on it there through Waweru and uh, he almost earned his side a crucial penalty but it'll be a free kick for now but it's still in a very very good position here for Galway let's see what they can make of this it's going to be the captain Duggan to swing it in and here goes danger for Longford Town and Duggan gives the, s the signal with his uh, right hand. He's waiting though, he's going back up to the ball so obviously the communication needs improving on there for this three kick. I hope it's not commentator's curse. Puts up his hand, gives the signal now, whips that low in and uh, good defending there but it comes out to Christopher, shot blocked down. It could have been A. Durban with the block there. And it's whipped back in towards the back post. Oh, and Longford Town lucky there as it goes out for uh, Froen. But good pressure for Longford Town there. And it was Shane Doherty who just didn't keep his eye on the ball. And the ball went under his foot when he was in oceans of space. If he controlled that, could have been a chance. You often see that, Tony, where the defender has rise just in front of Doherty. He's anticipated a touch and then it's run under his foot. Only for that, he probably would have controlled it at the back post. Would have got a shot away. Would have been a big chance for Galway. But that all stems from that mistake where Longford get possession away from the throw-in so they need to be careful in those type of situations and Killian Bruder there uh, penalised for that a late challenge on Manley of course two Manleys that's the Rob Manley who was uh, fouled there so that's another three kick so it was stop start at the start a bit of flow but still a lot of niggly yeah, the, fouls uh, the foul count is definitely uh, starting to tally up Tony so uh, the referee he mightn't give Galway too many more chances I think he might produce a yellow card shortly because as, as we said he'll want to let this game breathe and uh, these little niggly fouls they're not helping the uh, the tempo of the game at the moment so Mick McDonald will switch this ball from right to left towards Adam Evans Adam Evans had a lot to get to that and it goes out to Christopher and it's uh, back out to Lynch and now it's with uh, Sam Ward who plays a long diagonal ball to, to Shane Doherty will he keep that ball in it looks like he will get there no he he did get a touch to it but then he touched it out when he got to the ball so goal kick for Longford Town so yeah he, he's not making much of a fuss about it there Doherty I, I thought he was unfortunate I thought he did just keep the ball in and um, that maybe the full ball wasn't out over that touch line but um, it would have been a corner it came off McDonald but the, the linesman the far side feels that the ball was already out so Longford get away with that one and it'll be a goal kick as Stacey finds uh, Elworthy he was always a great outlet on this right hand side but he loses his footing unfortunately and Galway have possession now with Duggan and Duggan whips that through towards Conor Barry but it's well short cleared by Manny but Conor Barry wins that header well A. Durvin got the better of him there Dean Zember plays it out to Sam Verdon deep back helping out defence and it's uh, out to Shane Elworthy now who whips that ball down the wing towards Rob Manley under pressure from Killian Broder it comes to Duggan out to Mark Ludden now Mark Ludden left to Wawewu Wawewu's offside and that will be a free kick to Longford Town good high line there from Longford Town Kieran. yeah he was just coming back from an offside position there at Wawewu so that's disappointing there Galway just building a little bit of momentum there and it breaks down with, with, a, with a silly offside but Again, if Longford give possession away, we've seen that Stacey picked out El, um, Elworthy here. Elworthy, unfortunately, did just lose his footing, but when you give away the ball in these type of areas, you are inviting Galway onto you. And as we touched on earlier, they have got some very talented and capable players, so Longford just need to be careful in them transitions. And up towards Rob Hanley, uh, Manley, a little shot on the back from Broder, but uh, not spotted by the referee. Still with Longford Town, Dee Zamber plays it back to Mick McDonald, takes it to the outside his boot, plays it to Manley, but goes, bounces over his foot and goes all the way back to the keeper, Slingerman. He's had a, a long career in League of Ireland, Kieran. 
Yeah, he's been, there, he, Sliger. He's been yeah, around a bit after. Yeah, he's um, been out with the league for a little while, so uh, good to see him back. A very, very capable goalkeeper. Um, I know he had a couple of injury issues before he left the league as well, so uh, hopefully he can rebuild his League of Ireland career with Galway. And it's Doherty. He slips, but he, he manages to retain his footing and holds on to the ball. He's under pressure. Uh, where he turns out, where he goes into the box, the outside of his boot, and it hits the chest of hand. And Longford Town's Mick McDonald will clear the danger here, and he switches that ball diagonally towards Adam Evans. Gets ahead of two, it goes over the head of McCabe. But there's a Derville oh, flicks that through. But Morris Nugent is there to win that header out to. Uh, Jack Lynch, the right back, and he's into the Longford Town half now. And uh, that's the Connor Barry on the wing. Connor Barry under pressure. He has to play it back to uh, Jack Lynch. And Jack Lynch launches that fall, cleared by the head of hand, and then by, it looks like, uh, Dervin. And now it comes out to Rob Manley, just inside his own half, in the centre of the pitch. Out to Sam Verdon. Sam Verdon plays it out to Shane Elworthy. Cuts back inside from the right. And there's young McCabe looking for the option. He goes to Manley instead. Rob Manley. Rob Manley turns. Great space. He has ball 22 yards out from goal. He's looking for an option there. And he plays A. Durvin, Longford Town, going all the way back to Joe Manley just inside the goalway half on the left. And he will run forward now. He tries to play that to McCabe. McCabe holds possession, plays out to Adam Evans on the left. Adam Evans goes on a run past two goalway defenders and launches one in, but cleared by the head of Mark Ludden. And it's now cleared to, it looks like uh, Duggan, the captain for goalway. And uh, he gives that ball away to Shane Elworthy under pressure from a couple of long term players to Dean Zamber. Dean Zamber, 23 yards out. Well, that's poor from Dean Zamber, but will A. Durbin get there? No, he won't. And now, where well, Wayward was beaten to that by hand, it comes back out to hand after a ricochet. Back to Mick McDonald. And Mick McDonald, Kieran, all the way back to Lee Stacey. Yeah, this is excellent football, both uh, attacking and defensive from Longford. They're, they're getting the balance perfectly right at the moment. Uh, Zamber there just trying to be a little bit too precise. He was trying to thread the ball through the eye of a needle, and unfortunately, the move broke down. But at the moment, Longford getting everything spot on. They certainly are. And uh, that goes out for a throw in to a uh, Longford Town. Adam Evans comes across and take this. It's uh, about halfway inside the Galway half on the left. And he's just looking for the options there. And McCabe is there, but he goes back instead to Joe Manley. Joe Manley will launch that towards Sam Verdon. And good communication there between Bruder and the keeper Slingerman as it let go through to Slingerman. Launches that out to the left here but that will go out of play and there's not a chance of Shane Doherty getting to that ball so throw into Longford Town No but we have seen him latch on to a few uh, diagonal balls Doherty already he definitely has the pace um, to get onto those sort of balls so no harm from Schligeman trying that one he hasn't really lost anything uh, it's, it's out in a in a position that isn't going to hurt Galway so uh, that's definitely something Longford have to be careful of they, they don't want to give Doherty too much uh, green grass to run into And Wawari was very pacey as well as Sam Verdon has that ball switches it from right to left towards Adam Evans and it goes oh, over so oh, I thought it was going over Jack uh, Lynch but uh, he's fouled when he clears the ball good defending by Lynch there the right back that was a pass and a half out towards Adam Evans and unfortunately it just held up there was a little bit of backspin on it it was almost like a, a, go a golf shot on, on a par 3 Tony a little bit of backspin on it um, unfortunately there was just too much and it held up towards the end and uh, Evans uh, in his attempts to get on the end of it he's given away a foul but what a brilliant pass that was over to the far side it certainly was, but uh, Longford Town in command here, one goal to nil to the good. In my opinion, three points from the last four games would guarantee a playoff because of all the other teams around them having to play each other. And uh, But we want Longford Town to win the title, but as I said, they needed five wins out of five before the Athlone game, in my opinion. That's four wins out of four if they're thinking of winning the league title. And I tell you what, if they play like this for the rest of the night and play like this in the, in the remaining three games, they have every single chance of winning the title. But uh, we've touched on it so many times in commentary, haven't we? 90-minute performances haven't exactly been plentiful from Longford this season. So is tonight going to be the night? Yeah, because there's several times where a good commanding 45-minute performance yeah. and then just uh, take the foot off the accelerator somewhat in the second half of a lot of games this season. I, I even thought last week 4-0 uh, probably flattered Longford slightly did, against Atlone. I thought it was a decent performance from Atlone, and that probably shows in their result last night against Strada. But again, Longford just taking a little bit of a chance there playing out from the back and Galway come away with possession. Mark Ludden here, we've touched on his decent left foot. He had a chance to put that into the box, but he has another opportunity now. He goes inside to the captain, under-hit pass, and A. Durvin gets stuck in and wins the ball, and it comes to Rob Manley now. 
And Rob Manley with the ball about 30 yards out from goal. He goes by Bruder, cuts back to the right and lets off his shot. And it uh, takes a deflection and goes out for a corner off Nugent. So good defending by Nugent there after Bruder was shown a, a clean pair of heels by Rob Manley. Yeah, good direct running there from Manley. Gets the ball down, uh, gets it at his feet. Good close control, takes on the defender, gets a shot away and wins a corner. Just to update you on a half-time scoreline elsewhere in the division. Another big game in terms of the, the playoff places. At half-time, it's Cove Ramblers one, Cabin Teeley one. And of course that game kicked off at 7 o'clock so another full time result of that before this game comes to its conclusion Adam Evans here with the corner on the right, there's one, two, three, five Longford Town players around the penalty area and it's uh, whipped in and it uh, goes all the way across to Jack Lynch who just uh, nice and calmly cleared the danger and put that out for a throw in a man who's very cool Young Lynch. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best uh, delivery in there from Adam Evans, but you, you often see that where them little uh, daisy cutters, they just they go under a couple of players' legs, maybe a player misses a swing at it and it'll fall to a man at the back post. That could have easily happened there with Evans, so we'll forgive him that one, but uh, you'd like to see a little bit more loft on the next one, I think. Yeah, Lynch looks like a very composed player. He played in centre-back position when the sides met in Amy DC Park. He's playing right back this evening and uh, that throw is cleverly taken to McCabe and it ricochets out and it looks like it is uh, Doherty well back helping out in defence and he plays that out to I think that's Conor Barry it is and back to Christopher and Christopher launches that forward but uh, well cleared by uh, Manley and Longford Town's Dean Zamba the captain has it to A. Dervin A. Dervin plays that back to hand and uh, Longford just uh, keeping possession of the football and uh, not lumping it forward. If they don't see an option forward, they keep possession, playing it back as Elworthy's header onto Sam Verdon, but the ball goes out for a throw, and, and Killian Brody just comes across and probably allow Mark Ludden, the left back, to take this throw on for Galway. So, really good play out from the back there, yeah. Tony. They invited Galway onto them as a block. Four or five Galway players came pressing the ball. It went back to Stacey. Immediately when Stacey received at his feet, Elworthy comes out to this touchline and gives him the option to switch it. It was slightly overhit from Stacey, but Elworthy did really well to get his head on it, but unfortunately, Verdon didn't just have the pace to connect with it but a, a good move from Longford so it was an A Durvin is it a judge to a foul with Wayro that's a very soft one very yeah. very soft one I thought Galway had a few go against them so far tonight so uh, it, it's probably just a, a bit of a balancing act we'll, we'll give them that one but a, a poor decision from referee Alan Patchell there so uh, Mark London plays that back to Broder and Broder plays it to Sam Ward Sam Ward plays it out to the far side to Nugent and Nugent tries to play that long the right to Stephen Christopher Manley's with him he cuts back inside he takes a, a cross in and ricochets back but he still has it does the goalie man and clear by the header McDonnell and uh a. Durvin just needs to lump that ball out sometimes you just need to lump it forward and not care where it goes that was an awkward one hard to know what to do with it it was, it was dropping out of the sky so getting a clean volley on it wasn't easy and uh, he was confident enough to take it down and uh, not the best clearance in the world but he did get it out of the danger area and that's all that counts so Longford Town in control here by one goal to nil leading this contest playing good football as it switched brilliantly out from Adam Evans central position out left and it comes back in and Longford Town just playing keep ball when there's no options going forward and it comes back out to Joe Manley now. Joe and Manley. I think with the wing backs for Longford being so high, Galway now seem a little bit more reluctant to go and press the ball in these areas because they know if they press, they're leaving those well, they've, wide they've areas. They've really been caught on three occasions yeah. on the counter doing that, so they're probably a bit more cautious with uh, that plan. Again, he's just out of shot on your screens, but Elworthy again glued out to this right hand side. He's causing Galway real problems. Doherty doesn't know whether to stay or go, and it's given Longford uh, plenty of outlets. Here's Mick McDonald the ball under pressure from Shane Doherty and where Wayward goes across to Hand, but Hand has lots of time to find Joe Manley on the left. Joe Manley to Adam Evans and Adam Evans is running back and <laughs> he's forced back and Hand will play that back to Lee Stacey. Where Wayward goes towards him and oh, uh, very uh, audacious by Lee Stacey there. But yeah, they're the hard stopping <laughs> moments that come with this style of football, but the way Longford are playing at the moment, you'll take it. And again, Manley, really good hold up play from him. He gets stuck in and he won't get the benefit there, unfortunately. It just bounced off his hip out and out for a Galway throw, but really good, honest play again from the centre forward, Rob Manley. Yeah, he's up again, Nugent and Lynch there, and Galway winning the throw and just ricochets off and out to throw into Shane Duggan. Turns inside, whips that across to Mark Ludden on the left, about 10 yards inside his own Galway half and uh, he plays that ball to is it Duggan again yeah back to Bruder Bruder across now to Nugent Nugent to Lynch 
Lynch under pressure but holds possession back to Bruder. Bruder, awkward bobble there but he controls it and he tries to whip that out to Christopher but it's a throw in for Longford Town. There seems to be a real hunger from Galway to, to always feed it into the feet of Duggan. He's, he's clearly the playmaker in the team, but uh, at times they do overdo it. They're, they're giving it to him in very tight positions. Look, he's technically good enough of a player to receive it in those positions and, and not lose possession. But at times, I just wonder if they'd be better served maybe looking elsewhere. Free kick to <coughs> Longford Town. So Longford Town leading by one goal to nil. Rob Manley's seventh goal of the season, assisted by Aaron McKay, but great credit to Adam Evans, who put in a, a good little move down the left there, setting up the assist-assist, and then the goal eventually after the save by Singerman, poked in by Manley. Yeah, an uh, unfortunate slice there as uh, Joe Manley tried to clear it, but luckily for Longford, it fell to, to a teammate, and uh, it's all about way back with Stacey. He goes up the field to McKay, but McKay is beaten in that battle, and it is with Duggan now. And Duggan, he's uh, done well there tonight. Back to Sam Ward, back to Duggan. Duggan switches across to Mark Ludden on the left. Mark Ludden plays that, but Mick McDonald will get there. And that's, he that's food and drink for Mick McDonald. That it one, it was is. far too close to his feet. Killian Brodo and possession of all. He might play it back to the keeper Slingerman, but he cuts back it to the right, then clears it towards Doherty. Header of Shane Elworthy. And, yeah, offside uh, yeah. flag went up. I spotted that one. Shane Doherty came from, from well off there. Um, he really needs to be getting back in quicker. That, that's poor from the winger. So Longford Town with yet another three kick. The three kick count is very high, Kieran, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> At least the foul count has uh, subsided somewhat in the last 10 minutes. Zamber back to McDonald, to Zamber. Zamber inside his own half, plays that all the way back to Dylan Hand, just outside the arc of the Longford Town penalty area. Now he's going to switch that. No, he decides against it. He has uh, Manley there. He is going to play it back to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey takes a touch. He's looking for the option there. And he switches that out. Great ball what to Adam ball. Evans. Although, fortunately, just bounces up on him. But he controls that. Back to Durvin. Durvin under pressure from Duggan. He wins it back on Duggan. Wins it back. And then there's a foul by Duggan on A. Durvin. And A. Durvin doesn't stay down. He must have got a bit of a thump there. Unintentional foul, but still a foul and a free kick too. A long free Yeah, if A. Durvin is down on the turf you know he's taking a knock he's a very very honest player and loves a, loves a physical battle and he had to use his, his physical presence there because he tried to turn out of a very tight situation he slightly overran the ball but a, a good tackle to make up for it and he got stuck in again and he, he, he wins Longford the free kick so Lee Stacey with uh, the free kick he launches it from left to right towards Rob Manley it's cleared by the Galway defence comes out to the skipper Shane Dung on the outside of his boot plays that Christopher back there to Lynch and Lynch trying to find Christopher gets no one except Joe Manley Joe Manley surrounded by three Galway players kind of Barry dispossesses him plays it back to Lynch Lynch to Sam Ward back to Lynch and Morris Nugent uh, decides to leave it go back to the keeper Slingerman who switches play to Mark Ludden on the left but Ludden wasn't really aware that that was going to happen no I think uh, Slingerman was trying to put a bit of disguise on it I actually thought it was it was a nice bit of skill at first it was almost like a no look but he fooled his own player yeah he, he got too much on it and uh, unfortunately for Galway it'll be a throw in long for Mick McDonald now with a cross he just slipped there on impact that surely and came off the hand referee. there unbelievable from the referee but he allows play to go and, uh, well hopefully there won't be a goal from this because that would be controversial well played by Mick McDonald good defensive header there plays to Shane Elworthy Shane Elworthy now running down the right and he plays that to Rob Manley Rob Manley holds on for possession he's gone towards the penalty box plays it straight into Bruder but uh, Elworthy wins that back and McDonald slides across and gets the touch onto that to McKay to Sam Vernon he's in the box Sam Vernon great tackle by Bruder just when Sam Vernon was about to pull the trigger to score the second goal brilliant tackle by Killian Bruder yeah there was a few calls for a penalty there and never a yeah, chance that that was an absolutely goal saving tackle but what about Aaron McKay winning that aerial challenge that was what set the move up and just as I say that unfortunately Mick McDonald has given away a free kick but Aaron McCabe Super. he's probably the smallest player on the pitch he's leaped up in the air he's got his head on it I think it actually took Sam Verdon by surprise that he was played in by that flick on and maybe that's why his first touch wasn't just precise enough and it got away from Verdon he almost got back in using his strength but as you said Bruder with an absolutely goal saving tackle Free kick now for the tribesmen and it's Stephen Christopher coming across to take this now. Having a few words with referee Alan Patchell. This is danger for Longford Town. It's all so happening here. <laughs> it is all happening. Longford Town still leading by one goal to nil. Stephen Christopher takes five or six steps back now. Two man Longford Town defence. Here it comes. Whipped in from the left towards the back post. Cleared brilliantly there 
by hand but it comes out to Sam Ward with the effort and takes a deflection off a Longford Town defender and yeah. goes out for another corner to go away. Good, good initial clearance from Adam Evans at the back post but I thought Longford were a little bit slow in getting out there and pushing the line back up and as a result it allowed that shot on goal uh, and it took a deflection it could have gone anywhere it goes for a corner but can Galway make something of it? So Shane Duggan goes across but uh, Stephen Crystal looks like he's just going to lay it into the six yard box where there's a host of bodies comes in and cleared by Manley's head and then Shane Elworthy completes the clearance but it's out with Duggan Duggan back to Christopher cuts inside and whips another ball in towards there oh just bounces over two goalie players cleared by hand comes out to Sam Ward again Sam Ward will check back and he, he plays that ball back there to Connor Barry very deep back helping out defence and it's uh, charged down by Dylan Hand great play there as uh, Lynch went to hit that ball into the box I thought that first corner in from Christopher was absolutely excellent it was into a really dangerous area and Longford did well to, to clear it away but they won't want to give away too many uh, set pieces and corners in that area because Christopher looks like a player that can put, put a ball on a, on a plate for a man he certainly does uh, he's a talented player and going not out this game yet is where Weiru has possession of the ball he uh, plays that across to Lynch who uh, whips that ball in to the box and there it goes beyond and out for a Corner. corner yeah Dylan Hand there did really really well because Connor Barry had got in between uh, Hand and Shane Mick McDonald was there, there as well the two yeah, of them were there uh, Mick McDonald got in between the two of them there um, Connor Barry so a, a crucial header from Dylan Hand who started this game really well but again we just mentioned a couple of moments ago Christopher's threat from these positions and he's got another chance to show that now with this corner for Galway you've dug it in the box there you've uh, Connor Barry you were away where it's whipped in from Christopher and uh, cleared out but let back into the Longford Town box danger for Longford Town as Doherty heads that ball but gathered by Stacey and Longford Town can just calm it down a bit here yeah Stacey met his intentions clear there to his back four a big loud shout and he was always if he had to come through defenders or attackers to grab that ball he would have done it he was always going to get on that one. Oh, misplay by Sam uh, Ward and Verdon is uh, there uh, Adam Evans is it it's Adam Evans it's Adam Evans Adam Evans right. with the goal it's Adam Evans and I think Schlingerman will be disappointed with that one the shot was uh, it was not straight at the goalkeeper it was slightly to his side but it wasn't exactly in the corner either but the sheer power on that shot from Poor Adam Evans Poor mistake by Sam Ward it caught me by surprise yeah. I was expecting him to clear the ball he missed kicked it sliced it past himself and in ran Adam Evans and buries into the back of net 2-0 yeah it's no more than Longford deserved they've been absolutely excellent in this opening 33 minutes but that is a really poor goal uh, you wouldn't associate that type of goal with a John Caulfield team at all um, but they've just given away an absolute gift and uh, Adam Evans who's been brilliant since he's been moved into that left wing back position he's got his reward with a goal 2-0 to Longford just after half an hour play here at Bishopsgate so 2-0 for Longford Town and Galway coming away with the possession here now need to get back into this game pronto and it's Longford Town Manley has it out to Sam Verdon Sam Verdon plays that ball out to Elworthy Elworthy goes out that will be a throw in to Galway and that was a poor uh, I don't think anyone expected a goal no, from that nobody expected it it's just ran under the uh, the defender's foot and it's, it's not a wet night here at Bishopsgate really so uh, there's, there's no real excuse for that mistake it's just a, a complete lack of concentration takes his eye off the ball and it's a very very costly uh, slip of concentration from Galway uh, ball breaks into the midfield McCabe chases it down but it falls at the feet of a Galway midfielder he goes wide and uh, brilliant oh, pressing from Evans, Evans. Yeah. That's, what I, well, that's what I mean Tony if a player deserves a goal out there tonight it's Adam Evans his work rate out on that left hand side it's top class each and every week and he's got his rewards now at the other end of the pitch and we're talking about the terrible defensive blunder by, by Ward but Adam Evans was alert to it and it's Longford Town Rob Manley under charge now he's uh, three goalie players to get past and he's into the box now and he holds possession he wins the corner so that's great play by the forward as Aaron McCabe was coming into the box but I think Manley did brilliantly uh, yeah, there I'm just looking at John Coffey over on the, on the touchline he is absolutely fuming again Galway trying to go back with the pass there passed it straight to Rob Manley and Manley as we see all the time his only thought was to drive at the defence and try and create something I'm a little bit disappointed he didn't have a shot on goal I know he was on his weaker left foot but uh, he, he went for the cross it was cleared away for a corner corner taken by Zamber now towards the penalty spot there's a bit of wrestling in there and the referee is a judge that that is a foul and it'll be a free kick to Galway United 
it. Just going back to the goal, it was great awareness by Adam Evans because you're always, as a striker, told to expect a mistake. Yeah, Nine he times out of ten, yeah. it won't happen. Yeah. But it did. He anticipated and ran onto it. Well, he is traditionally more of an attacking player. You know, he he's, is, a, he's yeah. a left winger that's been put into a left wing back right. position. But you could see that attacking instinct in that moment, as you said, really good anticipation from Evans. Cleared down towards Waweu, but uh, one by the head of McDonald and Young McCabe doesn't uh, hold on to that and Nugent plays it back to the keeper Slingerman Slingerman launches that forward yeah, not for the first yeah. line tonight just looking for Dotterty out on this left hand side but Slingerman we've highlighted his talents I know he's been out of the league for a little while but um, he is he was at one stage one of the best goalkeepers in the country but his distribution tonight has been very very poor at times so uh, that's disappointing from a, from a Galway point of view it certainly is and Shane Elworthy has uh, the throw in for Longford Town here now Sam Verdon looking for it but I don't think he'll go to Sam Verdon with Ludden and Doherty around him. But he does, actually. And Sam Verdon, the push in the back That's on Doherty. Awesome. Correct decision by Alan Patchell. Uh, Verdon uh, penalised there and it'd be a free kick to Galway. But this was a potential banana skin coming in here tonight. Galway had won five games in a row since Caulfield had come in to the hot seat until that defeat at home to Cove so I was expecting a, a tough proposition here tonight but it's going well at the moment for Longford Town <laughs> early yet that, yeah that's, that's the crucial thing at the moment it's still very very early days here Christopher again with a chance to whip one in he's got plenty of float on that one and it was a good ball again from Christopher second ball falls to Barry he shoots it's blocked and Rob Manley doing some defensive work back there uh, appeals for handball but the ball is with the feet of Shane Duggan he's in a tight area but again he finds Christopher left footed cross and that's a really brave header by Rob Manley we'd be more used to seeing that from his brother Joe and again Mark Ludden uses his left peg to get across in there Adam Evans he was trying to let that one run and that was a crucial mistake from Evans but thankfully the cross dribbles across the six yard box there's no tribesman there to turn it into the net Longford on the counter attack now with Sam Verdon he's got Durvin he's got McCabe he's got uh, Manley as well he looks for McCabe oh and it almost broke off the feet of a Galway defender into McCabe and Schligerman then showing a sign of nerves there it took him a couple of attempts to parry but we can take a breath now Tony because uh, Schligerman gets the ball out to his full back and play restarts yeah it was Sam Ward who uh, nearly uh, ricocheted off into the path of McCabe but Connor Barry was outstanding for Galway down yeah. in the corner there I don't know how he managed to hold on to possession and he whipped a dangerous ball in but there was no Galway player forward enough to put it in the back of the net so yeah, lucky escape we, for we've praised um, Adam Evans to the nines so far tonight but um, he made a very poor decision there he tried to let that ball run out for a goal kick and uh, the go I think it was Barry wasn't it that, that nipped in and, and Barry, yeah, yeah. got the cross uh, low across the six yard box and fortunately for Longford there was no one there to turn that into the net but that could have been a, a really bad way to let Galway back into proceedings here and Ward has possession of the ball now and uh, well he just decides to come forward he fainted the pass and now he does pass it across but it goes out to Shane Elworthy but uh, retrieved by Conor Barry Conor Barry gets now. it back off Ludden and Barry has it now he's Doherty ahead of him plays it to Doherty Doherty under pressure from A. Durvin great uh, tenacious yeah. tackling there from A. Durvin what an engine that young Teffier Park lad has yeah because uh, Shane Elworthy was just out of position there after giving away possession he couldn't get back in but A. Durvin said done the running for him and that's a brilliant bit of defensive midfield, fle uh, midfield play from the youngster and the, the local man here at Longford so throw in for Galway and it's Longford Town a lead by two goals to nil 38 and a half minutes on the clock I see here. the Galway staff have brought a towel as well here for Mark Ludden so he's dried this one off and he's flung that as a really good throw it's flicked on Duggan oh great block there by Dean Zamber I think it was yeah and that's a weapon Rob we didn't Manley know Galway had to Adam Evans deep back in his own half helping out defence but that hits the top of the main stand and comes back down from Adam Evans so Hopefully no dent in that nice new Bishopsgate sign over there. But uh, as I said, that's not really a weapon we knew Galway had. Um, it's certainly not one they've used in recent games <laughs> against Longford. But that was a really good long throw um, from Mark Ludden. And there is a bit of bit of running room to, to work with over on this side. So he, he went right up against the wall. He leant back on it and he wound himself up. And he got a really good throw in towards the six-yard box. It was flicked on. But luckily, uh, the second ball was won by a Longford defender. And they come away from that situation unscathed. And a miss by Shane Elworthy, but Doherty won't get that. It's a throw and two Longford Town. And even when they've put Longford Town under pressure, and there's been a good few periods of a lot of pressure on the Longford Town uh, defence, they haven't got a shot on target yet. No, they haven't really created anything of note. A couple of half moments, little crosses across the area that no one's been there to turn in. But uh, in terms of shots, um, for Lee Stacey to worry about, nothing really to report on, on the Galway front.
and Joe Manley has possession the ball just comes inside the box Adam Evans is overlapping but he doesn't go for him he goes from McCabe instead and it goes back to Manley to hand and hand will play it across Mick McDonnell Mick McDonnell oceans of time oceans of space comes to the halfway line now and he tries to play that to Sam Verdon, but he's uh, challenged by Killian Broder. Comes out to Doherty, loses it to Durvin. Out to Elworthy. Elworthy back to A. Durvin. A. Durvin puts his heel on the ball and plays it back to Mick McDonald. Just take the sting out the game for a, a moment or two as he nearly overplayed that ball and he loses yeah. possession there. And uh, Lynch will play it back to Slingerman. Slingerman just rolls it with the heel of his boot and launches it long down right there towards Stephen Christopher. Crunching header from oh, Joe Manley. Super by Joe Manley. But it's, uh, oh, will Rob Ooh. Manley intercept? Nearly did, but not quite. And uh, Good it's pressure given away to Elworthy, and he slips, but it comes out to A. Durvin, and A. Durvin tries to play that ball across. But Jack Lynch gets there, but Adam Evans comes with a nice little cross, but nobody from Longford Town there's Mark Dodden. Chest it down. That's not handball, folks. No. It's a chest. And McDonald wins that ricochet and brilliantly puts the ball through to Shane Elworthy. Shane Elworthy, God, ricochets off four, takes the sting out. That allows Slingerman to get down and smother the ball. The hunger these Longford players are showing tonight, unbelievable. Every 50 50, even 60 40s, they're winning out there. They're winning absolutely everything. First to everything at the moment, Longford Town, particularly down this side. Elworthy, um, Verdon, uh, and all the players down this side, they've been brilliant. Little bit of miscommunication there. Dylan Hand almost. Uh, let Wawaru in there for Galway, but Lee Stacey in the right place at the right time to gather. So, danger over temporarily as uh, Lee Stacey. Again, that's just a little hands. half moment yeah. for Galway, but no end product at the no. moment from them. Not the greatest of kick outs no. from Lee Stacey. Will Durvin get up to that? But uh, Duggan misses it too. McCabe, it comes to Verdon. Verdon loses out to that. But McCabe gets it back. It's now with Adam Evans. Adam Evans rampaging forward. He lets Ooh. fly from about 30 yards. But that goes harmlessly wide from Adam yeah, Evans. Yeah, it was just sitting up there for Evans. And he gets a good clean strike on it. And it actually almost ran across the path of Rob Manley there. And again, if he taps that in, we're speaking about his, his poaching abilities and being in the right place at the right time. So no harm from, from Evans there taking that shot on. It could have it turned into something a lot more. It certainly could have. And of course, it, he's already got on the score sheet tonight. Poor yeah. distribution again from Schligerman. Yeah. That's well under hit. Easy collection for Elworthy into the feet of Verdon. And uh, Verdon, that's his poorest pass of the night so far. So Gorey coming forward with Christopher. He checks back towards Lynch. Lynch launches the ball from right to left towards Doherty. Doherty brings it down. He gets by McDonald. Is fouled by McDonald, and that's a definite free kick. So dangerous position, about 25 yards out from goal. No need for the foul there, Kieran. Really? Mm, yeah, he's got pace already. So if he got round McDonald, it, it could have been an issue. But Sam Verdon's getting a telling off from a couple of his teammates there. He actually got sucked inside um, ball watching, and the ball was switched out to Doherty. It was his job to track the man. He didn't do it, so he's got a right telling off from his players there. So Stephen Christopher will take this free kick. He's 25 yards out from goal. There are five Galway United players on the edge of the Longford Town box. It's going to be a three-man wall. Adam Evans discussing with Lee Stacey where to go as Christopher whips that towards the back post, towards Bruder, thinking it's great save by Lee Stacey. Doherty with the shot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's all put in there. Eventually put in by Galway. And uh, it's a goal for Galway. They had three or four attempts of that and eventually on the score sheet and it's Morris Nugent, is it? No, it's Mark Ludden, Mark Ludden, Mark the left Ludden. back. Um, oh, that's, a, that's a, an absolute bitter pill for Longford to swallow. Uh, we were just two minutes away from the half-time break. They give away a cheap free kick and they failed to clear the lines on two or three occasions and eventually the, the Galway pressure just became too much and Longford caved in and for such a, a dominant first half performance that's going to be a blot on the copybook for Longford now as they head towards the dressing room at half time and Mark Lodden uh, left back uh, at the right back post couldn't miss him two yards out nobody around him but Weiwewu had an effort uh, Doherty had an effort I can't remember the first person I said <laughs> who had an effort but those three had efforts on goal and then eventually it comes out and it's Mark Ludden who was in the hand to poke it in so 2-1 yeah, a, a bit like Schlingerman with the first goal where he's made a really good save and he hasn't been rewarded because Manley's uh, popped up for a tap in same thing happened to Lee Stacey there he made a good save can Longford uh, oh I thought they were going to cancel out D that goal dangerous goal cross there from Adam Evans but we, would, we were saying that uh, it's comfortable for Longford at 2-0, but we did uh, warn that it's uh, early in the game, yes, and a, a long way to go as Lee Stacey has possession of the ball. So, go always, Gander will be up now. Rob Manley heads that to uh, Sam Verdon, won't get there, and it's uh, headed back by Bruder to the keeper, Slingerman. 
So he launches this towards Doherty. But Shane Elworthy's there. But Doherty wins with the head. And it comes to Conor Barry, 22 yards out from goal. Off where Weiwu. He was trying to play it out wide to the advancing uh, uh, Christopher coming in from the far side. And there goes the full uh, half-time whistle. Longford Town leading two on half-time. But that was a terrible goal to give away. 44 minutes, Tony, best performance of the season, but that 60 seconds just before the halftime break could prove to be very, very costly. The fans in the main stand are giving the, the Lampard players plenty of encouragement as they head down the tunnel. Look, it was an excellent performance in that first half, but unfortunately, one slip of concentration just before the break. Let's go away back into this one. Certainly does, and halftime here, good performance in the first half, but as Kieran said, blotted on the copybook there by that goal conceded just before halftime. Longford time. And Lover Town back out on the pitch here at Bishopsgate. They're just doing a bit of a, a warm-up routine out in the centre circle. And here come Galway out of the tunnel. If you missed the first half, Longford Town lead by two goals to one. They were 2-0 up going into the 44th minute of that first half. But unfortunately for Longford, they couldn't hold out. A set piece from Galway uh, got them back into the game. It was Mark Ludden who popped up at the back post after a good ball in from uh, Stephen Christopher. It took two or three phases of play for the ball to eventually reach... Uh, Ludden at the back post, but he, were, he was there to tap in. Before that, Rob Manley got uh, the opening goal of the game when uh, Aaron McCabe produced a sublime bit of skill to flick the ball up to himself. He hit it on the half volley. It was a good save from Schlingerman, but the fox in the box, Rob Manley, was there to turn it home to give Longford an early lead. And uh, that was followed up then by a second goal for Longford, a defensive mistake from Galway, and Adam Evans pounced to make it 2-0 before Galway got back into the game. I think we've seen a substitution there, Tony. Um, is that Carlton I see coming on for Galway, the former Longford man? It is. Ubezeno is coming on and going off is Conor Barry. So Conor Barry, I think, has gone off the field of play. And, and uh, Carlton Ubezeno is on the field of play for Galway as the official announcement is coming. Yeah, I, uh, I won't give an opinion on um, Carlton's time here at Longford because uh, I know how this game works and he'll definitely come back to bite us. So I'll leave that until a little bit later on. But um, Conor Barry, surprising to see him go off. I know he was quiet in that first half at times, but he definitely would be one of Galway's more um, attacking threats from my point of view anyway. He certainly woke Karen, but uh, maybe he got a bit of a knock, you never yeah. know. But I, I would have kept him on the field to play because uh, he uh, is a dangerous player and there was a couple of instances where he created good chances. Uh, one in particular with the ball across the box that if any Galway player was there, it would have been a goal. So a uh, bit of a surprise in my opinion, but Obazueno is on the field to play and Galway attacking now with Doherty. And Doherty uh, gets by Adam Evans and he still has the ball. He's under pressure from Joe Manley. Whips the ball across, dangerous ball across Dylan Hand. Brilliant clearance by the yeah, young defender for Longford Town. It's a goal save and interception from Dylan Hand. He was excellent in that first half and a really good start from Galway. John Caulfield, whatever he said in the dress room at half time, it's had an effect because they've come firing out of the traps here, Galway, and they've earned an early corner here at the start of the second half. It'll be taken by Captain Shane Duggan. So, Galway out of the blocks. 2-1 down, getting the goal just before half time. It's whipped in from the right here. The dangerous area. Oh, and it's in. Is that London again? Pouncing Mark London again, I think. And suddenly, 2-0 up a minute before half time, a minute after the restart. It looks like it's Mark Ludden amongst a body of players yeah. who managed to get that into the back of the net, and it's 2-2. It, 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 it was an absolutely brilliant ball in from Duggan, and the, the Galway players, they packed the six-yard box. Lee Stacey was in a pocket where he just couldn't get out and, and make real contact. He got his fists on the ball, but he was pinned to his line, Stacey. He was a, caught between a rock and a hard place, and unfortunately, his punch falls uh, straight to, we, we think it's Ludden who's fired home from, from close range for his second goal of the game but what a disastrous start to the second half for Longford they've come out sleeping out with the dressing room certainly have and uh, oh. Galway are attacking again Christopher but that's well ballooned over the bar and Galway two down a minute before the break are suddenly back level a minute after the break and it, it's happened so many times this season Tony where Longford have come out sleeping out of, out of the dressing room at the start of the second half we've seen it against Bray and we've seen it here again tonight and uh, we mentioned Longford realistically if they're going to win the title they're going to have to win each and every of the remaining games and this is a disastrous start to the second half for the red and black it adds the entertainment factor though for uh, anyone watching here tonight and also on the LTFC stream as McDonald has possession of the ball there. Derek Doyle will be fuming. That's terrible as it's given away. Is that A. Durvin giving it away? Yeah, and Longford. Longford Town under a bit of pressure and putting themselves under pressure to boot Kieran. Again, going back to, to trying to win league titles, if you're going to win, win league titles, you need to show steel. You need to show a lot of stomach. And at the moment, the Longford players aren't showing that. They've been put under huge pressure now by Galway and they need to rise above it. 
Ludden here again drying that ball off with the towel. This is going to be a long throw, no doubt about it. So Galway coming out of the blocks at 100 miles an hour, long throwing in from the left from Ludden towards the box. It's cleared by Sam Verdon back helping out defence, and then Dean Zamba clears that. And that's brilliant play out here to Adam Evans from Rob Manley. Adam Evans on the left, he's looking up for there's only Manley there, tries to get the better of Lynch, and he's a judge to a fouled Lynch and a free kick to Galway. And Rob Manley having a few words with Adam Evans, but. Uh, Longford Town just need to focus on what they did well in the first 40 minutes of the game, Kieran. Yeah, very much so. As Galway send a long ball forward again, Dylan Hand, good header from him, but everything just falling the way of Galway at the moment. That's a good tackle, though, from Dean Zambra as uh, the Galway fullback, Jack Lynch, tries to switch play out to the far side to the substitute carton, but it runs out for a Longford throw. I think Longford just need to settle things down now, Tony, try and get their foot on the ball and, and try and get a, a bit of rhythm going again. At the moment, um, Galway, though, the pressure here is just mounting by the second. Yeah, you have Rob Manley's seventh goal of the season, assisted by Aaron McCage's first assist, and then uh, Adam Evans' first goal of the season put Longford two up, but Ludden just before the break, and Ludden again, but it's Longford down to Manley on the attack now, and it's played out to Sam Vernon, whips it into Adam Evans, so oh! oh! he fires the ball across the face of goal, doesn't connect properly with it, but Aaron McCabe nearly slid in to divert it to goal with, but just couldn't get a connection. Yeah, you'll hear that's produced a, a roar from the main stand over there trying to lift the players here. This difficult start to the second half. Good clean strike from Evans and it almost ran into the path of Aaron McCabe. We've touched on it previously. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time. And again, he was inches away from making contact there. And there was so much pace on that shot from Evans. If McCabe had got his toe on it, you would have fancied it to fly into the back of the net. <coughs> and uh, it's Christopher on possession of the ball now. The left, he's under pressure from Durban. He cuts back inside. Plays that to Duggan and Duggan out to Lynch and uh, or Ludden uh, goes back all the way to Lee Stacey here from Elworthy and Lee Stacey launches that forward from the back and Nugent just plays that ball back to his keeper Slingham out but he uh, miss kicks it and Adam Evans miss kicks it it goes out off Evans foot we have thrown to go and taken by Doherty no he's leaving it to Lynch so Lynch here looking for the options throws it down towards Doherty but that's cleared by the head of Adam Evans helping out defence but he hasn't cleared it yet Doherty has it Hand has it Manley and now to Evans Evans is challenged by Doherty back to Joe Manley Joe Manley launches that ball down towards his brother Rob Manley is he fouled by Nugent referee says play on had him in a bear hug there no, no decision coming from the referee and London eventually clears and now comes out towards Doherty but Joe Manley gets his head on that ball but will he keep it in he does indeed and he takes control of the ball he gets the better Stephen Christopher plays it to A. Durbin A. Durbin puts it back to Dylan Hand Dylan Hand to A. Durbin good pass there as Christopher is jumping at the heels of Durbin out to Mick McDonald Mick McDonald he comes forward tries to play it to Sam Verdon it's easily dispossessed by Mark Ludd and uh, Uber Zeno is rampaging down the left great the tackle A. Durbin from Durbin yeah Lee Stacey eventually completes the clearance. We've seen the pace though of Carlton there. He threatened to get away from Durban, but Durban, his determination comes to the fore there and he gets a crucial toe on it. Unfortunately, Rob Manley offside. So again, Galway with a chance to launch a long one forward and pile the pressure on and it's out towards Doherty. How's his first touch? It's not bad at all. Tries to flick it around the corner of Joe Manley, but Joe Manley uses his strength really well and a good ball out to Zambra who gets it to Adam Evans, takes a touch, takes a second touch, works his way up the line, looks for a direct ball up to Manley, but that is uh, a little bit inaccurate from... Evans and Galway with possession again. Yeah, Bruda launches that forward towards uh, Ibozeno and he is offside. So Longford Town can just breathe a bit now and just take the sting out of this game and try and get back to the type of football and the type of play that they produced in the first 40 minutes. Yeah, poor play from the Galway substitute there, Carlton. He's looking right across the line and he's found himself offside. That should never happen in that situation. So I'm sure John Coffey won't be pleased with his uh, substitute's impact there. But let's see what the Longford winger Evans can do. He plays it into McCabe, but McCabe tried to let the ball beat him and spin the man. And uh, in the process, uh, the Galway player kicks it against McCabe and it's gone out for a throw-in yeah, to Galway. Lynch will take this throw-in now. Just looking for the option, he's Doherty, he's Duggan, in a bit more central position shown for the ball now, but he's going to throw this down the wing, and it uh, clears the head of Manley, it goes out to Dylan Hand, back to Mick McDonald, and uh, Wilson where we will chase, but McDonald has lots of time to look up and get a pass off, but that's straight to 
uh, Ludden and it's cleared but it's uh, Sam Verdon tries to win that doesn't win it but Sam Verdon uh, Dean Zamber has it now to Joe Manley back to Dean Zamber just inside the half charge down by Doherty comes out to A. Durvin A. Durvin plays it back to Dylan Hand out to Joe Manley Joe Manley out to Adam Evans just inside the goalway half on the left plays inside to McKay McKay to A. Durvin A. Durvin back to Dylan Hand this is better from Longford Tony they're moving the ball with the zip we've we'll seen in the first, the first half, half. yep and McDonald plays that ball to Sambury, touches it on to Adam Evans. Adam Evans charging forward, still has possession, tries to get the better of Lynch and, and Duggan. He wins a throw in as Lynch is forced to clear that out. I thought Zambra could have just held on to that for a second more and let Evans run off him and then play the ball, but he played the flick first time, as you said, and Evans had a lot of work to do then to try and beat two men, but he's done really well to win the throw in. Evans going to take it now for Longford. McCabe offers himself, uses his chest to control. Evans flicks it forward, but it's inaccurate pass from Evans and it's cleared away by the Galway captain, Duggan. And this could turn into an awkward situation for Mick McDonald. And uh, that's very, very soft there. Well, Wayward was never really fouled there by no. Mick McDonald. That's very soft. Now, you could say um, we're being biased, but I usually call it as I see it. And I think that was a soft foul. Yeah, Mick McDonald's bracing himself to go in for the header. And uh, in the process... And Galway have taken that quickly, but the referee he's going to make Galway wait for the for the for the official restart with the whistle. But as I was saying, Mick McDonald he's bracing himself for the header, and uh, in the process he's brought his hand forward, and Mawuru has ran straight into McDonald's hand, and he's gone down looking for the free kick, and unfortunately the referee has uh, has fallen for that bit of play acting, and and Galway have won a free kick in a very dangerous situation, and no surprise to see their captain Shane Duggan standing over it now. Yeah, and Shane Duggan over the free kicks. And over this one too, he launches that forward, but it's a free out, and Longford Town can uh, just and breathe that. a sigh of relief. A lot of goalie pressure at the start of the second half, but then Longford seemed to just calm things down, get back to that keep uh, yeah. football that they were playing in the first half that served them so well, and hopefully they can get back to that and get back on the score sheet because I don't think Longford Town have blown a two goal lead all season No, just, just going, away, going back to that uh, the free kick he's after giving against Galway there uh, he blew the whistle almost the, the minute the ball was delivered into the area you see that from referees a lot he's, he probably knows he's got the initial decision wrong and he's, he's compensated for it but got a ball into Doherty here Joe Manley's going to have to move his feet quickly Doherty with the shot across the goal and there was Carrington and unfortunately it's flown over the bar from a Galway point of view but a big let off for Longford great play from Shane Doherty down the right hand side and the pace of Carlton Ubersino, he just came in from the left, unseen, ghosted in. And if that was on target, if he managed to keep it down, it was 3-2 to go away. And he was only about six yards out. Yeah, uh, Doherty's probably just got a little bit too much pace on the ball. It's difficult to measure the cross when you're running at the speed Doherty was. But it bounced up just Yeah, uh, Carlton's done well to get even a toe on it. But unfortunately, with the pace of the ball, it's just uh, flicked off his boot and over the bar. But a massive let off for Longford Town. Good play from Galway. And uh, McCabe hits that ball towards Adam Evans. Will he keep it in? He does. No. Oh. Well, he didn't. Then he put it out afterwards. So yeah, he's tried to drag it with his left foot, and it's ended up flicking off the opposite foot. Then and out for a throw. Unlucky from Evans. Lynch to Doherty. Doherty on the pressure plays it back to Lynch, but intercepted by Rod Manley. Rod Manley to Joe Manley. Joe Manley looking for help. He's forced backwards there as still in hand. Plays that down, but that's easily clear, headed but clear by Duggan. It comes out to Lynch. Lynch. Hits the ball over towards uh, Wewewo, but it's uh, two of a cup that's goes to the front to Longford Town. Yeah, I thought Wewewo might have been offside if he got onto that one. Um, he doesn't time his run perfectly a lot of the time. He has been caught offside a few times. So, uh, look, that's just a little bit of inexperience, but he certainly got the pace to get in behind that Longford back four. Um, but it's a real battle now this second half we didn't see this competitive edge in the first half Longford were, were totally dominant up until the 44th minute but it's a real game now mistake from Lee Stacey he's given possession away chance for Galway inside the area Galway forced back though thankfully Zambra's there to clear the danger but that was an awful mistake from Lee Stacey and Stephen Christopher should have done better than he did but fortunately for Longford he didn't capitalise on the error from Lee Stacey who's capable of producing a handball by Mick McDonald is it? Yeah, McDonald's turned his back on that one. That's a very, very harsh decision. But uh, going back to what you say about Christopher there, I think he actually got taken by surprise that the ball landed at his feet. He had an opportunity to get a shot on goal. And with Lee, Lee Stacey off balance after that poor kick, it would have been a very, very good chance percentage-wise that that uh, shot would have gone into the net. Lee makes a mistake like that. Yeah, his concentration at times this season hasn't been great at all. Um, he's had a really good game up until now, but that's a, that's a poor error, and it's led, uh, in truth, to this Galway free kick, and I hope we're not going to see shades of what we've seen at the end of the first half. Good ball in. It's flicked on by Galway, and it's in the back of the net. 
It is indeed, and it's uh, Uwe Zueno, the yeah. former Longford Town yeah. player with the goal there, and uh, Duggan with the free kick in, and it eventually falls to Uwe Zueno, the former Longford Town player, the Galway sub, and whatever John Cofield said at half time, a rocket up the backside of Galway players, it certainly worked, Kieran. 2 0 down yeah. a minute to go to half time, and now 3 2 up with 58 minutes on the clock. Well, I said it, Tony, didn't I? I hope we weren't going to see shades of what we've seen at the end of the first half where Longford uh, give away a cheap free kick and then lose concentration, lose organisation from the set piece. It's happened again, and uh, this has been an absolutely disastrous uh, 15 minutes or so from Longford Town. And unless they can find a couple of goals now in the remaining half hour, we might be witnessing Longford's title hopes crumbling before our very eyes here at Bishopsgate. Who would have predicted this? We did say when we are two up, it's still early. Uh, yes, and Longford Town have throughout the season started very sluggishly in the opening 15-20 minutes of second half after putting in commanding performance in the first half I said that about five minutes before Galway scored and unfortunately it's happened again Kieran yeah, and the captain Dean Zambra uh, down here have been treated at the moment but John Caulfield he's up he's barking out the instructions now he smells blood Longford look very very vulnerable at the moment they're very shaky at the back at the start of this second half and Caulfield now wants his players to absolutely pile forward put the pressure on Longford and hope they can put this game to bed yeah, it's, it's uh, some turnaround really by Goal and you have to give them credit as we said beforehand yeah. five wins on the bounce before they lost 2-1 at home to Goal and looking like a second consecutive loss with 2-0 down with a minute to half time and it's, uh, it's always good for a manager when a substitute uh, scores as well so uh, Caulfield he's, he's earning his, his golden star over there tonight um, but from a Longford point of view we're seeing the title um, chance here uh, potentially evaporate before our eyes but from a Galway point of view this is going to propel them back into the playoff picture big time it certainly is, and Longford Town have Joe Manley on the ball now, suddenly 3-2 down. What a turnaround from the 44th minute. Dylan Hand whips that ball to no man's land. Mark Ludden will probably shepherd that ball out. Shane Elworthy probably needs to conserve his energy for more fruitful uh, forays later on in the game. It goes out for a goal kick. I suppose the question now Tony is how long before Darrod Oil makes some changes and the, the man everyone's going to be looking towards on the bench, of course, Dean Byrne. Yeah, and just latest scores at the moment. As we just see that ball go through to Lee Stacey. Shells nil, bowls one. And Coven and still level at one apiece. Long ball from Stacey up towards Rob Manley. He makes minimal contact, but the ball breaks again to, uh, to Sam Verden. But his pass was uh, was off target. And uh, Galway come away again with uh, Doherty here down the, the right-hand side. He takes on Joe Manley. Good covering from Manley, though. Goes back to Lee Stacey. Let's hope for a more accurate kick this time from Stacey. And that's a good ball this time into Evans. Good first touch from Evans. There's McCabe. Here's uh, A. Dervin. He checks back outside to Evans. Evans pass there again. Not precise enough. And again, Doherty's seen a lot of ball here at the start of this second half. Good tackle from Manley. And it's with A. Dervin now who switches inside to the captain. Dean Zambra showing no ill effects of that knock earlier. But he's given away a possession. And here is Goal United again in on goal. And a good oh, save from Reese Dersey there. onto the crossbar. Yeah, we're way out there. In on goal, great shot, going to the roof of the net, brilliant save onto the crossbar by Lee Stacey. I thought we were was going to make it four. Yeah, he's um, he's he's made up for the earlier mistake there, Lee Stacey. He's he's kept Longford in this game. A fantastic save from the shot with Weru, but um, the referee has a judge that that is a free kick to Galway United over the far side, and he's going to produce a card here. I think the player in subject uh, in question is Sam Verden, and it, it looks like Verden has received a yellow he card. Remonstrated. Uh, ferociously and then kick the ball away so he's always going to get a yellow card for that and that's the third yellow card for Longford Town this evening Joe Mandy, Mick McDonald, and now Sam Verdon have all found their way into referee Alan Patchell's book and Galway United superb turnaround looking the more likely to score it and Tony this now. free kick is going to be from almost an identical position where the third goal came from for Galway so Longford need to be switched on here Lee Stacey trying to keep that back four line nice and high here um, but there's plenty of, of space for Galway to chip that ball into now this is an awkward area for Longford to defend from it's a good ball it's flicked on it's saved by Stacey but it's turned home again by Uber Zeno yeah Two and off the bench it was Nugent's header that was brilliantly saved by Lee Stacey and looked like Morris Nugent, flick header from six yards, was going to find the net. Stacey pounced on it, produced a brilliant save, but it comes out to the former Longford Town man, super sub, Uwe Zeno, off the bench, and he scored twice and 2-0 down to 4-2 up. What an incredible turnaround.
Yeah, and uh, look, you can't say long for Warren, given plenty of warning about the uh, the set piece ability of Galway. Uh, Stephen Christopher, Shane Duggan, they've both got the ability to whip in some really dangerous balls. And as I said there, there was a lot of open space to aim into. It was a good ball into the head of uh, Morris Nugent. He flicks it on. Lee Stacey makes a really good save. But like Longford's opening goal in the game, the keeper isn't rewarded because uh, there was the substitute, Carlton, to, to tap in and uh, it's 4-2 to go with the captain Dean Zamber is going to be replaced now and Carl Chambers who had a brilliant impact off the bench uh, in Athlone the other night he is going to come on now for Longford Town he's got a bit of a rescue mission ahead of him here Carl Chambers 4-2 to go away now uh, 62 minutes played at Bishopsgate an incredible turnaround at the start of this and second he, half he was outstanding uh, against UCD as well Kieran. so hopefully he'll produce another super sub performance league title gone now Longford Town need 3 points for a playoff doesn't look like they're going to get it now, 4-2 Yeah, down. unless we're going to see the mother of all turnarounds here. It looks like the league title is gone and Longford, uh, they're flooding flooding forward to try and get back in this game. But you know what that means. They're going to leave huge opportunities at the back and I think they might be about to give away another free kick. Indeed they are. And again, this is almost in the exact same position that the third and fourth goal for Galway came from. So if Longford don't defend this uh, properly this time around, they have nobody to, to blame but themselves. And I think Duggan is leaving it to uh, Christopher this time to take it. Sometimes it's Duggan takes the free kicks, other times it's Christopher. It's Christopher who's over the ball now. And exactly in the same position as the yeah. two goals scored by Uber Zueno. So is it going to be deja vu again? Hopefully not from a Longford Town Longford defending with that high line again. It's a, it's a risky game. It's whipped in. Oh, it's flicked on. That was almost an own goal. I think it was Elworthy. Yeah. the defender. Free kick there again, uh, whipped yeah. in by uh, Christopher. And uh, nearly an own goal by Shane Elwood. Yeah, it just goes to show you don't always need to pick out a player in the area. If you just get it into a dangerous position, into a dangerous area, things happen like that. That could have easily gone into the back of the net. But Elworthy um, didn't know. He had to just get his head on it and hope for the best. And uh, luckily for him, it went out for a corner. Shane Duggan with the corner whipped in, but cleared by hand. But well, uh, it comes out to Christopher. And Christopher turns his mark and whips it back into the box. And Lee Stacey... Spills it and gathers it the second attempt and now whips it forward. Adam Evans, will he get this? Oh, Sam Ward with a crucial intercepting header there. And the keeper comes out. But I have to say, Sam Ward made up for his earlier mistake when he conceded the second goal. That was brilliant from Ward because Evans was in if Ward didn't get to that ball. So a throw into Longford high up the pitch. Evans takes it quickly into Rob Manley. We haven't seen much of him in the second half. Manley in a tight area here. Has he won a corner for Longford? He has. Can this be a route back into the game for Longford? A corner here on the 68th minute, is it, Tony? 65th. 65th yeah. And it's going to be Evans to take. So Longford Town really do need to get a goal here. Adam Evans with the corner from the right. Uh, whipped that ball in towards McDonald, ah, but it's cool. well gathered by Slingerman. Yeah, too close to too the Too close to the keeper. Maybe aim for the penalty spot is what they say is the most dangerous yeah. to whip it in towards the penalty We're spot. Going back to what I said a couple yeah. of moments ago, don't always have to pick it out perfectly for a man. If you get it into a dangerous area, little moments can happen. And that was just too floaty and too close to the goalkeeper. Poor, poor delivery from Evans. Galway again flooding forward on the break here. Yeah, and Stephen Christopher in possession. He does really well there. He finds you with you know, back to Christopher. Oh, he turns A. Durban inside out. With that ball in towards Doherty. And it just goes out for a goal kick again. Very dangerous down that left, especially since the introduction of former Longford Town player. Now with Galway, Ubezeno and Cabantini have gone 2 1 up away to Cove. Uh, in injury time, so Cabantini have taken the lead against Cove 2 1 in injury time. So that's going to be a bouncing back there. Yeah, that'll be a huge result for Cabantini if it ends that way. They're on a, a, a dramatic dip of form, and this is going to be a moment of luck for Longford. Oh, what a save from Slingerman! Dylan Hand with the volley from just inside his own half, and the keeper was back peddling. I thought he was beaten, and somehow he jumps up and manages to pound the ball out what a save for a corner that is one, almost goal of the season from Dylan that is one of the best saves I've ever seen live uh, Michael Schligerman take a bow that is absolutely incredible I thought Longford were about to get a huge slice of luck there but Schligerman denies Longford corners taken by Evans oh and it's, I think that might have hit Longford looking for a penalty yeah, for handball Verdon had the shot and it seemed to just take a deflection off a hand and that's why Longford Town are remonstrating for a penalty Verdon's shot seemed to strike a hand yeah. the referee just I thought I thought throwing. initially um, it might have hit the Longford man on the line and came back out but the, the, the player is very very clear with their 
their protest there. They feel there was a handball, but uh, another quick corner here from Longford, and it's going to be A. Dervin to take. Good flat delivery towards the front post. That's well defended by Galway. Carl Chambers, that's his first touch off the bench. He finds Evans out on this left-hand side. Good first touch, and again, Longford win a corner. Yeah, good play by Adam Evans there, but I still can't get over that save. Oh, I'm from still reeling that. from that. Because that looked like goal of the season from Dylan Hand. As good as uh, Tana Dugan's goal for Athlone against Strahda last night, but some save by Slingerman. Whipped in by Durban again towards the back post, and Evans oh, saw ricochet. Unbelievable. Not by Shane Doherty, the striker helping out defence. And now it's uh, Wawewo, is it, with the ball? Oh, it is. And he's challenged, and it's a free kick for Galway. And I have to say, this second half, they've been electrifying Galway, and especially the introduction of Uber Zeno. He's turned this contest on its head. But I have to say, the delivery from set pieces of Shane Duggan and Stephen Christopher has been spot on as well, Kieran. Yeah, what a block that was from Doherty, though. It looked like Evans was, was going to at least get a shot on target, if not find the back of the net. Brilliant, brilliant uh, block from Doherty. But that was never a free kick there. And frustrations here building at Bishopsgate because Longford, they were so dominant in that first half. Galway got themselves back into it before the break and they've punished Longford at the start of this second half for, for some lapses in concentration and when decisions start to go against you tensions can just boil over here and Galway looking to add to Longford's frustrations again it was Doherty there, it was actually Christopher with that low cross, it's gathered by Stacey he distributes it quickly to Shane Elworthy but again uh, Stacey's distribution, very very poor there he throws it straight out of play and Galway will have the chance to gain possession high up in Longford territory. It just shows you what a strange division this division is yeah. Anyone can beat anyone. Yeah, but well we touched on it earlier on, didn't we, about that um, draw to the result last night. Nobody seen that coming against that loan, and nobody seen this second half coming um, after how dominant Longford were in the first half. But we've said it time and time again on this stream um, Longford, they're just not able to, to piece together a 90 minute performance in the division. Yeah, and uh, again, it's come home to roost tonight. It's Lee Stacey clears that ball. And a header off uh, uh, Manley to McKay, but it's cleared by Ludden eventually. Oh. Ludden finds Doherty, does he? He whips it over Joe no. Manley, but Joe Manley recovers, plays it back to Lee Stacey under some pressure from Wawewo. And uh, that's Christopher's header intercepted by Carl Chambers, the Longford Town substitute. And now he'll try and come forward. And he tries to find Manley, but it's dispossessed, comes back to Sam Verdon. Sam Verdon to A. Durban, the pressure from Christopher, but he holds on to the ball. Now he's under pressure from. With Weiwo and wins the free kick. Longford Town need to score in the next five minutes if they yeah. get anything uh, off of that, this That's game. the difference between the first half and the second half, Tony. Longford were afforded so much time on the ball, whereas A. Durvin there, he's been hounded every single touch he gets, and uh, they have won a free kick, Longford, but as you say, they need a goal within the next five minutes. So Longford Town 2 0 up with a minute to go to half time. Now find themselves incredibly 4 2 down. The ball is whipped in to the box and it hits off Joe Manley's head and goes out for a goal kick there and Adam Evans who took the free kick will come back out now to the left flank. So in the first half we had Rob Manley's goal from Aaron McCain's assist after brilliant work by Adam Evans. Then we had Longford Town go two up. Steve McGuinness ter uh, uh, a terrible uh, mistake there in the back from the uh, Stephen Christopher sorry. Uh, sorry, it was Sam Ward, wasn't it? Sam, Sam Ward, Ward yeah. Sam, uh, Sam Ward, with the terrible mistake, uh, miskicked his clearance, Sam Ward, it went under his foot, and Adam Evans pounced to score 2-0. But since then, Mark Lodden, just before half time, again from a dangerous three kick in the second half, and then the introduction, of course, of Carlton Ubezeno in the second half has turned this game in this con uh, contest on its head, and he scored twice from two dangerous three kicks as well. So suddenly, 4-2 to Galway. Oh, uh, it's great Duggan, play from Duggan. Brilliant ball there, uh, pass by Chambers and he wins the three kick Chambers a judge to have fouled him a couple of soft couple, couple of soft free kicks but I suppose in general no, that, the referee for no that, that, was, that was definitely a foul on uh, Doug and he used his strength really well to, to bully his way past a, a couple of town players and he plays a, a pass into the feet of a teammate there and the referee could have probably played advantage but I think Galway would be very very happy with this uh, free kick situation because they've caused Longford so many problems from these situations and it's a chance for Duggan to whip it in Lee Stacey wants his line higher but again that gives a lot of space in behind and Longford were almost punished for leaving Bruder that space should have scored a free, free header for Killian Bruder He's seven yards out, he lost his marker, timed his run to perfection from the free kick sent in by Duggan. Had all the time in the world from six yards out and Bruder heads over, he I should have scored. I think Longford need to rethink that um, that 
the way they're defending those set pieces. They're, they're pushing very, very high up and they're leaving so much space in behind. They're lovely little fo floated balls from the likes of Duggan and Christopher and it's leaving Galway players a, a beautiful ball to run onto and with the pace already on the ball, all you have to do is get a clean contact and it could have been in. As you said there, Tony, Broder should have scored. That should have been five for Galway. It should have been five for Galway. And the difference between, as Christopher has the ball, he whips it through to Ubazuino. He's on mark, goes into town box, and Elworthy he gets a better. Oh, he shoots just over the bar from Ubazuino, and it took a. It must have been a save from Stacey. It's a corner. He's got a finger on it, yeah. But uh, Ubazuino had the ball. Looked like Elworthy got back to uh, snuff out the danger, but great check back by Ubazuino as Elworthy went flying by, and his shot, fingertip saved by Lee Stacey. Another corner. Yeah. This is some second half performance. From the tribesmen what a, here in Bishop's game. What a performance from Carlton off the bench. I'm so glad I didn't uh, criticise his time at the club during during the uh, the halftime break. He didn't show this type of form for Longford. I don't know was he affected by injury or whether he just I couldn't find injury, his feet. Yeah. But injury he didn't show this type of form for Longford. But uh, he looks at home at Galway and he's he's punishing his former club tonight. Duggan with it again. Oh. oh, and that's just headed wide. I think that's Ludden. The left back, it is Mark Ludden, the left back with that header and nearly got his hat trick. And uh, it's going to be McNally coming on here for Longford. He was another man who had a huge impact off the bench in Athlone, but he's got a lot of work to do tonight if he's going to get Longford anywhere into back into this game. Adam Evans, who got the second goal of the night. Longford, uh, they looked in such a great position when he scored that second, but he has been replaced, and that is a very disappointing end to the night for Adam Evans. But this is going to have to be... Um, one of the best super sub performances ever if, if Longford are going to get back into this but game. The difference between the set plays from Galway in the first half and the set plays in the second half is that the accuracy and the pace of the delivery has caused Longford so many problems in the second half, whereas in the first half they didn't produce that danger from those set pieces. I think what it goes back to again in the first half maybe trying to be too precise at times trying to pick out certain individuals that they probably feel are good in the air whereas in the second half they've just put it into really dangerous spaces on the pitch they've allowed their players to run onto it and when Longford defending with that high line it's played into the hands of Galway and they have absolutely punished Longford time uh, after and time as I said the most dangerous place to put a cross or a free kick into is around the penalty spot yeah. and all those dangerous crosses and corners well, the, the free kicks anyways have gone at the penalty spot and produced the goals yeah as they call it the second six yard box that you could draw an imaginary one on the six yard box and, and tag it on to the, to the real six yard box there and that's where Galway have been floating the balls into and uh, they've been absolutely brilliant on set pieces but uh, from a Longford point of view this second half performance it's, it's probably as, as bad as it's gotten this season you put it up there with the performance against Bray and maybe the home game against Cavan Teeley here but they've totally capitulated Uberzena plays it through to uh, Christopher he tries to whip it in it's blocked down he wins the throw in there so 2-0 up you're thinking this is a great performance but I did flag it by saying unfortunately Longford Town have a history this season of playing very well dominating first half and then being very sluggish in the second half and paying the price yeah. and unfortunately that prediction has come true that's exactly what has happened here tonight so Mark Ludden has the throw in we know where this is going yeah towards the penalty spot again oh he doesn't get the same purse it slips out his hand Verdon clears that Four. but it's uh, Doherty again who gets the ball and whips that back in and Four. oh dear Ubazueno uh, had a chance and it goes out for a goal kick so yeah. another chance at Ubazueno man of the match if he grabs the hat trick, I think you have to give him man of the match. But I was just going to say, funny, uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Long ball up towards Rob Manley, and it's a mistake from the Galway back four. Manley strikes it on the volley. Oh, and it was almost McCabe at the back post, but it runs away for a and goal a kick. by Mark Ludden. He misjudged the bounce of the ball. He got caught out. Manley got behind him, got the ball across, and Aaron McCabe just centimetres away from getting the touch to divert that's not the there. first time tonight uh, McNally uh, sorry McCabe has almost crept in at the back porch he really is a poacher um, the positive thing is that he's getting into those positions obviously the negative is he hasn't made contact but going back to the man of the match situation if Carrollton gets the hat trick I think you have to give him uh, the match ball and the man of the match award but for me Doherty has been absolutely phenomenal he for Galway tonight the work rate in uh, both the first half and the second half from the number 11 of Galway has been immense he has been consistent 
yeah. from start to finish. That's the difference. Other Galway players have been brilliant at certain stages of the game, but he has been consistent from start to finish. Yeah, I thought in the first half he was a constant threat with his runs in behind, but he just wasn't getting the service. But with Galway getting on top in the second half and dominating all over the pitch, we've seen more of Doherty on the ball, and he's been able to show us his, tr his true qualities. His deliveries into the box have been excellent. His running has been uh, relentless, and he he's been a standout player for Galway tonight. And London with the long throw down towards Ubrizeno, cleared by McDonnell, out to aid Durvin, and it stays in play. He launches that towards Manley, and McCabe doesn't get it back, but it comes back to Joe Manley, but it's cleared down towards uh, Wawewa. Wawewa holds off the challenge of Han brilliantly, and he goes by a couple of more Longford Town challenges, and it comes back out here now for Galway. And that's Ward out to Doherty, and Doherty holds up ball. He has Ward here, but he doesn't uh, go for that option. He's dispossessed by A. Durvin. I have to, I have to say now, Ward, after his terrible gift for Longford's second goal, has been very good too, and a couple of crucial interceptions that prevented good opportunities for Longford Town. And here's the danger man again, Doherty. He's sprung the offside trap. He's got Carlton at the back post, and it's a goal, and it's turned into the it's net by Wawaru. Uh, there was a couple of options there for, for Doherty to pick out. We looked, we thought it was going to go to the back post for um, for Carlton to perhaps he get the hat trick. He was totally unmarked at the back post. Yeah, but and then obviously, Wewewe was unmarked, running in towards the penalty spot and composed finish. And where did this performance come from? 2 0 up on 44 minutes. Now 5 2 down. Longford Town, goodbye league title. Yeah, they've, they've, uh, they've thrown the towel in in this second half. Unfortunately, Ed Irvin just sat down on the turf there the moment that ball hit the net. He knows this game is gone. And I think and the, the players... the title gone Yeah, too. the title is most certainly gone. And this is... To concede five goals, Tony, if they were to lose this game 3-2, they'd be absolutely sick as a parrot given they were 2-0 up. But to lose 5-2 and potentially more yet... And at home. It's going to have a huge knock on confidence. And again, we thought the playoffs were secure. That's certainly well, not the case. Three points from four games, I said was needed because all the other teams are playing against each other so they're going to take points off each other and uh, Longford Town will still be third in the table after tonight but very disappointing to not get a win when you tune up on 44 yeah, you've, minutes you've got, lose five too. Yeah, you've got to worry about the confidence how it's going to be affected after this I can only assume it's not going to make any type of difference at this stage but Dean Byrne uh, we haven't seen him from the bench so I can only assume he, no he, he has some type of knock uh, maybe when the third or fourth goal went in as well Daradoy has probably said will save him for another day hopefully down the line playoffs um, is what the, 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 the aim will be now but um, I think at 3-2 he would have been sprung if he was fully fit Yeah and I think even in that first half with Longford being so dominant if he had been out there he would have seen plenty of the ball he would have been picking it up on the edge of that penalty area and he probably would have created a few more chances for Longford but again Carlton has uh, got in behind here he's going to take on Mick McDonnell he's got options inside will he go himself and Deeney Whale he gets the shot away he oh, buries it to the back of the net goal. and it is 6-2 to go with United at Bishopsgate Man of the match, the former Longford Town player, and I did say to you, you said it as well, maybe it was his injuries that prevented him from starting Longford Town, and I, I alluded to that too. Injuries were the reason why he didn't make it with Longford Town. Just unfortunate, but, mm, but my golly gosh, what a performance in the second half. He's come off the bench, he scored a hat-trick, he's been instrumental in every other chance that's been there for Galway as well and 6-2 what a second half showing from Galway and they are definitely back in the player hunt although they have Bray UCD and Drogheda in yeah. the last three games um, John Caulfield knows all about big score lines here he came here with Cork City a couple of seasons ago in the cup I think it was uh, was it 7-0 that night Longford were beaten um, right. under Neil Fenn and Never did I think coming out here tonight we were going to see Galway get anything near that total, but uh, John Caulfield's good run against Longford continues, unfortunately. Going back to Carlton, I remember when um, he was with on the books at Dundalk, I've seen him play a couple of times um, in League Cup games and the like for the first team, and he was always very highly regarded um, up in Oriel Park, and I remember seeing him play here for the uh, the Irish Colleges team as well, um, here at City Colin, as it was then, and he always stood out as a player with huge potential, but he came to Longford and a lot was expected of him, for whatever reason it just didn't work out, but... As I said, he looks like a player that's really at home in this Galway team and he's had a huge impact off the bench tonight with a hat-trick. And uh, Conor Barry, by no means, is, is a poor player as Carlton could be sprung in behind again, but luckily Elworthy's there. But Conor Barry's a very different type of player. He uh, doesn't have the same pace as Carlton. So Carlton's come off the bench tonight and he's given Galway a different type of option going forward and they've used him really, really well to devastate an effect to Longford Town's title chances. I mean, they had pace in, in Doherty and Wawewa, but they, they, they had triple pace when, when Carlton Obrezeno came on. Off the bench at half-time, a hat-trick 
uh, we're way well with a goal and then the brace from Mark Ludden the left back scoring twice as well and nearly had a hat trick as well Karen Mark Ludden Oh, there's still time yet, to only nine minutes left on that clock. I think Longford Town fans, they've been waiting so long to get back into the stadium and I can see a few of them already heading for the exit gates. What a hugely, bitterly disappointing night for Longford Town. And you just have to wonder, Tony, if they hadn't given away that goal before half-time, it would have been a totally different ball game. Vinny Fatterty going to be sprung from the bench now if, as if Galway didn't have enough firepower already uh, out there. They're going to bring on a man that knows all about scoring. Uh, well, it, it is Vinny Fatterty, yeah. And he's had a good night. He's been he's, he's been a, a handful. Night. He was very quiet in the first half, but he's used his pace and his physical presence really well in that second half. And he's opened up the spaces for the likes of Carlton and Doherty to run into behind it. Uh, he's played a big part in this result tonight for Galway. Certainly has. And uh, John Caulfield will be really chuffed with this turnaround. And he's done terrific job since he's come in. This will be six wins in seven games. Just a slight blip was the home loss to Cove. Finney Farrelly coming on with a big smile on his face and why wouldn't he? Uh, there's, there's so much space out there for Galway at the moment. He's got the fanciest chances of adding another goal against Longford. He's, he's scored quite a few down the years. He did suffer FAI Cup defeat here with Sligo Rovers uh, famously back in the 2018 season I believe it was. Um, but <laughs> he's going to put that right tonight and he'd love a goal against Longford with uh, Ed Irvin in possession now and he tries to spin a couple of Galway players. Is he fouled there Dervin? Indeed he is but this result well and truly gone for Longford now. Uh, just to report on that Dublin derby in the Premier Division, 80 minutes played and Bowes on their way to a big win against Shells who are starting to slip into relegation trouble now. 2-0 to Bowes at Tolka Park this evening. And uh, free kick to Longford Town, Adrian taking out to Joe Manley. Joe Manley plays it to his brother Rob. And Rob plays it out <coughs> way to McNally. McNally back to Joe Manley. Joe Manley to Rob Manley. Rob Manley turns a brooder plays out to Carol Chambers Carol Chambers is being approached by Duggan and he plays that out it comes back to Mick McDonnell Mick McDonnell whips that ball to the back post and uh, Lynch would just guide that out yeah. for a goal you kick. can probably count on one hand uh, Tony how many times Rob Manley has touched the ball in the second half he was instrumental in the first half for Longford with his hold up play when he picked it up around the edge of the area he was making direct driving runs at the goal getting shots away winning corners we haven't seen any of that in the second half Galway United with an absolute demolition job on Longford certainly have demolished Longford and I did say at the start just before kick off that I was wary of this game I had some trepidation about facing Galway here tonight, but when we went 2 0 up, to be honest, I thought, well, worst case scenario, a draw. 2 0 up and playing so, so well. You know, there, there's often been games here. I go back to the At Lone game earlier in the season here where Longford played really poorly in the first 20 minutes or so against a team they would have been expected right, yeah. to beat quite comfortably. But they got the result that night, and look, you went home happy, but. Uh, Longford have been so so dominant in the first half here but they have not come out with the dressing room in the second 45 Ed Irvin tries to play a direct ball in behind he did that to great effect for the manly goal in that loan last week but, but this you, time it's gathered by Schlingerman you nature of results you had UCD hammering Cove was it 6 or 7 yeah. away and then you see Cove going and beating Galway in Galway uh, draw to lose in games that you think they should be winning even at, um, last night Wexford with a great win the week before they go and play Shamrock Rovers That's, two yeah, last night and get turned over yeah, it's, it's uh, at Cabin TV. there's going to be a, a substitution here uh, off for Galway goes uh, Shane Doherty Shane Doherty has been absolutely phenomenal for Galway tonight and uh, he is going to be replaced by Chris Horgan for Galway United uh, I take it he's another one of the Horgan clan Chris Hogan uh, played a midfield for Galway against Longford Town at Amy DC Park early in the season but has to settle for coming on for just a few minutes this evening. I think he's a younger brother of uh, the great Daryl Horgan. He certainly has a Daryl Horgan look about him so um, hopefully we're not going to see any of that in the closing five minutes or so. Longford have taken enough punishment in this but second half. As well, that Aflone beating Drogheda 2-0 in Drogheda after Drogheda winning 1-0 away at Bray. Yeah, top of the table clash. You couldn't get any more confidence going into a game I against that loan. Drogheda, I said a long time out with the team I thought would win the Same league. as that, yeah. But here comes Manley Joe trying to put in Sam Verdon. But the keeper sling around, just let it go out for a uh, goal kick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that Drogheda... Yellow card there for uh, Stephen Christopher. He just had a little pull of the jersey of Joe Manley as he broke four. But Manley's pass was over hit and Sam Verdon couldn't get in on it. But... Uh, and I still think Drogheda I still think there's twists and turns oh there is I, I, this I, second I, half proves that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still think Bray are going to drop points and if Drogheda win the last three games 
Personally, I think the two of them will still drop points. Uh, I think just the, the nature of this league, everyone's beating everyone. I think they'll both drop points. And yeah. as we said, from a Longford point of view, with the top two likely to drop points, Longford had to go and win every game. They were in a great position at half time, been 2 1 up here to go and set that up. But that is dead in the water now. It certainly is because six points behind Bray with three games to go. And, and the goal difference is huge as well. Yeah. It's basically seven points. It is seven points because yeah. our goal difference was six, now it's two. And, and, and their goal difference is 16 or 17, something like that. So it, it, it is effectively seven points. Christopher goes across to take this corner now. I think the two of us are sounding a bit deflated in the last while. Yeah, look, I hope the Galway folk tuning in have enjoyed our coverage tonight. And I hope they'd, they'd say we've been, we've been honest enough in our evaluation. Um, but this is a massive, massive win for Galway at Bishopsgate. It's going to fire them back into the promotion picture. Ball breaks here to Lynch the... Has it. Yeah, Lynch. And Lynch uh, header ricocheted off a hand and it comes out to the corner flag. He has it and he's fouled. So, hand with the That's foul just there. a sign of frustration, yeah, Tony. Dillingham with, yeah. with a push there on, um, on Lynch. Bowls are 3 0 up away at Shells now in 84 minutes. Yeah, the pressure piling on Shells now. Uh, earlier on, we seen Cork beaten by St. Pat. So, Finn Harps fans will be delighted with that result and they'll be delighted to see uh, Shelburne taking a bit of a tonking tonight in that Dublin derby. So, Ian Morris and his boys, they're not safe yet. It just goes to show, though, um, the difficulty when you do go up from the first division of maintaining your, your Premier Division status. And they set it off so well, Shells, as well. Yeah, and they, they have a great squad of players as well, so their loss of form has been um, been surprising, to say the least. But again, it just goes to show when you do make that step up, I think it's a, it's a steeper uh, curve than, than people probably realise. So just next week, uh, Galway are at home to Drogheda. Huge, huge, huge game. Huge, game. Huge game. And uh, Bray are away to uh, Shamrock Rovers too, and Longford Town are away to Cabin Teela. As I was saying, three points from four games would confirm Longford's and, um, spot. Cabin Teely have been Longford's bogey team really ever since they came into the league, and they were on a dramatic poor run of form Cavan Teeley up until tonight they had only won one of their last eight in all competitions but they've gone and got a big win down in Cove tonight and they're going to be full of confidence now and they're going to be playing a Longford team who are likely to be deflated after this result so all of a sudden uh, what looked a simple path to the playoffs at the very least looks a, a very uh, muddy and complicated route to promotion as I said three points from those three games will cement the playoff and you know I've said it before on commentary here Tony for me if you're going to be going through the playoffs I always feel you need to be winning at least two or three games on the hop going into the playoffs carrying in so good momentum team on form. Yeah, yeah because I think we've seen it in recent years where Longford they were chasing the title they lost or drew their last couple of games players picked up suspensions and injuries and they just went into the playoffs almost feeling defeated like they missed out on the title and uh, all the rest and they carried that kind of deflation into the playoffs and, and it ended up costing them and I think really Longford need to go into the playoffs now by winning their last three games if at all possible and performances it goes without saying really need to pick up there's going to be four more minutes of punishment for Longford here the uh, the fourth official has uh, indicated with the board that there'll be four minutes of additional play so we just go through the run rundown of who, who has to play who Drogheda are away to Galway home to Wexford and away to Cabin Teeley and Bray are away to Shams 2, home to Galway and away to Athlone. Longford, we mentioned the next two games, Cove at home and Wexford away. And Galway, we mentioned Drogheda at home, Bray away and UCD at home. Cabin Teeley have Longford Town, UCD and Drogheda. And Cove, I suppose Wexford ourselves here, Bishop's Gate and Shamrock Rovers too. They have the easier run in over the last three games. Cole. And uh, another star player for Galway tonight is going to be replaced. Uh, Stephen Christopher going off. And uh, Donald Higgins going to come on for Galway United here. But a, a fine night's work from Stephen Christopher out on that far touchline. But I think we've just seen there uh, what's happened to Longford in the second half. They've totally shut down. They're not speaking to each other out there. We've seen Chambers and Manley going for the same ball and clashing heads. Just a lack of communication out there. A lack of leadership as well. I don't think this would have ever happened back in uh, 2014 when you had characters like Stephen Rice and Pat Flynn and Pat That's Sullivan. Nice, we've sorry, spoken yeah. about how hard it is to get that winning mentality and that experience into a team and I think the lack of experience in this Longford team is starting to show well you look at Bray they've got Gary Bray, Shaw Gary they've got Shaw, Paul yeah. Keegan he scored again last night the draw of the team they've been together for a good two or three seasons chasing titles and they've had some hard luck stories and some heartbreak stories but they've always come back strongly from it and it seems to have given them that little bit of character now and uh, it, you can see probably why Bray and Drotter are just that slightly bit above Longford now this season 
So Galway will actually move into fifth spot, Kieran. So Bray have 32 points, Drogheda have 30, Longfortown at 26 plus 2. UCD at 23 plus 9, Cabin at 23 minus 2. Oh, sorry, Galway leapfrog then. Galway have 23 plus 8, and Cabin are 6 and 23 minus 3, and Cove minus 3, 20 points. Bit of head tennis uh, up in the Galway area. It almost resulted in uh, McNally getting in there for, for an effort on goal, but so Schligeman will take when that. You look at those teams, Cove looked like the team. Well, they're six points behind Longford with three games. Here. It's all a big puzzle. <laughs> it certainly is. And that's launched out. I think Galway have just tuned out now. They're happy with 6 2. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say, I didn't really feel the, the cold in the first half, but, but I'm shivering here now. It's a, it's a very cold evening at Bishop's Gate, and fair play to the supporters that got their tickets tonight and turned out, and they got behind the team as best they could, but uh, a hugely deflating second half here for Longford Town. It certainly is, and we've uh, two minutes and 42 seconds of the four minutes additional time. And uh, we just want Longford Town to be put out the misery with the full time whistle to go. And for the Galway United fans who've tuned in, seeing their team 2 0 down a minute before half. Yeah, and a, to a, see the turnaround 6 2, they must be absolutely cockapoo. Yeah, and a, a, a big thanks to the Galway fans that have tuned in tonight. Again, I hope we've uh, I hope we put on a good show for you here. Um, and we do appreciate League of Ireland fans tuning in and supporting each other. So a big well done to the Galway fans, deserving winners tonight. Absolutely, a man of the match, Count Nubuzeno, the former Longford Town player. He's had injuries uh, through his career, really. It's set him back a bit, but hopefully he's over them now and he can produce these sort of performances. I think if Jose Mourinho was here, he'd still say Doherty was the man of the match. We've seen that with Harry Kane, didn't we, and yeah. Son? But, well, uh, Doherty, <laughs> from start to finish, has been the most consistent yeah. player for them. But when you take a player coming off the bench to team 2-1 down at half-time, scoring a hat-trick, Creating dangerous situations, other chances as well. You really have to go with. Oh yeah, you can't yeah. argue about it. As you said, for for uh, I suppose a consistent 90-minute performance, uh, or, or as long as he was on the pitch, 80 minutes or so, he was he was superb. There's been a few though. Again, Christopher was brilliant. Uh, Duggan showed little glimpses. Uh, he didn't get a lot of space Wood at times. Was very good in the second half after his gaff. Yeah, as you said, half. he recovered yeah. well. Schligerman with a couple of good saves as well after uh, some awkward moments here and there. Overall, I think Galway have shown really good character and team spirit. And you Jack can see what's very composed at the back, the, the number two, the right. You, back. you can see what John Caulfield yeah. is building here. Give him another season with this Galway team. If they don't go up this year, they'll be among the favourites for me next year to go up. Sam Verdon with the free kick and he whips that in towards the far post. Oh, and it's hit the hit post. The I think it was Manly, Car uh, Manly yeah. Joe Manly, yeah, uh, hit the post. There. And that is there the final the action. Full-time uh, whistle. full whistling. We're absolutely uh, starstruck here at uh, Bishop's Gate. Hard to believe what's happened in that second half. Longford Town went in at the break with a 2-1 lead, but they have totally capitulated in the second 45. Galway United run out 6-2 winners at Bishop's Gate, and with it, Longford Town's title chances are dead. So a three-horse race of the title now becomes two after that, Kieran. And just to mention that Shells won Bowes three in 90 minutes, so Shells have got a late consolation goal there. But uh, from a deflated commentary duo, we'll leave it there. Yeah, I don't think there's much need to <laughs> analyse that too much. The Galway fans uh, watching at home, they'll be jumping around their living room again. A huge thanks to everyone that tuned in, but uh, in particular the Galway fans, we, re we appreciate your, uh, your support tonight. And uh, again, I hope we put on a good show for you here on LTFC+. Plus. There'll be highlights as ever on the LTFC Plus channel, so make sure you... Uh, have your subscriptions sorted for that and one more home game to come Tony hopefully we're going to have playoffs but again all home games will be broadcast live here on LTFC Plus and just to mention uh, we still haven't got official confirmation of how the playoff format will run it was supposed to be two-legged but with COVID-19 yeah. that could uh, go to one-off matches and home advantage in a one-off playoff if that's the verdict could be crucial so Longford Town need to finish in second well they won't finish second might. Longford Town need to hold on to that third place yeah, but as we said, it's all a big puzzle at the moment. Uh, we're going to have to see how Longford react from this. But from uh, myself and Tony G tonight, thanks for joining us here on LTFC Plus. And a hugely disappointing night for Longford Town. But Galway United deserved winners. An incredible second half performance. Good night. God bless.
Keepers off his own. 